It was one thing to us. Good evening. Without the camera, there. you take your seats, and we'll get started here. It's 7:30, and pursuant to the bylaws of the town of Conway, the minimum number of voters necessary to constitute a quorum, being 25, is present. And so, uh, I'm informed by the town clerk we have a quorum, and hereby call the meeting to order. There. So my name is Nick Filler, and I am the duly elected moderator of uh, the town of Conway. This is my 20th year of doing that. I'm informed by the select board. Bob Armstrong asked if I would have any new jokes or <laughs> new humorous comments. Nope. Same old, same old ones. They've been working for 20 years. I figured we'll keep at it. Um, I do want to introduce you to some of our uh, visiting dignitaries here. Uh, to my immediate left is the uh, chair of the board of the select board, um, which is uh, Mr. O'Rourke, John O'Rourke. We also have Bob Armstrong uh, and Phil Cantor. And our town administrator, Tom Hutchison. Now also somewhere there in the corner, trying to hide, is Ginny Knowlton, uh, our town clerk, who has served in that position uh, for 40 years, I'm told. So Ginny is retiring, as most of you know, because you've seen the various, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know the, the, uh, the elections coming up and all the placards and things. So um, I was just going about to ask for um, a recognition of her dedication, her diligence, and her duty by acclamation and, and clap of the hands, but you beat me to it. So I'll turn uh, the meeting over momentarily to um, Mr. O'Rourke, who may want to say a few words about Ginny. Thank you, Nick. As you know, uh, Virginia Alice Knowlton has been our town clerk now for 40 years. Uh, she's probably one of the most knowledgeable people in town about the history of town. I know every time I want to know something about the town, I always ask Ginny, and she always has the answer. Uh, we're going to miss her tremendously, her institutional knowledge. Uh, the fact that she does such a great job at town clerk uh, and essentially this job has become extremely important over recent years as the state has piled on more and more mandates to the town clerk. Uh, and essentially what I'd like to do now is ask Ginny to come up here. Come on up here, Ginny. All the way up, Ginny. <laughs> In recognition of Ginny's 40 years as town clerk, we have a plaque for her, and it reads, For Distinguished Service, presented to Virginia A. Knowlton, in appreciation for your 40 years of dedicated and outstanding service as town clerk to the residents of the town of Conway. Come on over here, Ginny. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Phil Cantor had suggested that instead of a plaque, we give Jenny uh, 40 gold coins as they used to way back when, but uh, that would have been a little expensive. <clears throat> Here it is at town meeting again. It seems that every year these come faster and faster. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here at what is known as the uh, most essential democratic process here in the Commonwealth. Uh, as you know, Frontier Community Access Television is uh, taping us tonight uh, for viewing by those residents that didn't make it tonight. Uh, and also, uh, you can go to their website to see uh, other town meeting, other meetings that they uh, 
they tape for the town, the select board meetings, I think they do planning board meetings, uh, and a couple of other, the other committees. So if you're interested, you can always go to their website and find those videos. Uh, also, uh, you can go to our town website for any other information on the town. Uh, and that, that has recently been, uh, our town website's recently been updated by and redesigned by uh, uh, Roy Cohen. Roy, want to give us a, a raise? You all received one of these in the mail. It's our annual uh, town report for fiscal year 2018. Uh, this is a tremendous work, has a lot of information in it. Uh, we certainly want to thank uh, Lisa Tarowski. Lisa, t stand up, please. Lisa put this together for us. She did an outstanding job as usual. Thank you, Lisa. I want to thank our department heads and chairs of our boards, committees, commissions for keeping their budgets under control this year. They did a really good job uh, in submitting their individual budgets. And we certainly need to thank the finance committee, uh, Alan Singer, Roy Cohen, where's Tom? Tom Donovan, where are you, Tom? He, Tom's out here somewhere. Uh, Bob Stone and Andrea Boudoin. They did a great job helping us put together the budget. And certainly the grunt work on that budget was done by our town administrator, Tom Hutchison. Tom? <laughs> We're very lucky to have a 20-year contract with Tom. <laughs> Right, Tom? <laughs> and, and of course, my colleagues on the select board who have done an outstanding job throughout the year. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, our town budget is about $6 million. Uh, it's, it's been increased by about $186,000 for this year, for the fiscal year 2020. That's a little over a 3% raise uh, in the budget. The town operating budget went up about $44,000, about 1.8%. The school budget went up about 141,000 for about a 3.9% increase. The way things are going at the uh, Commonwealth, uh, the governor's budget is in, the house budget is in, the Senate budget should be in by the middle of the week and then they'll reconcile them, and we're hoping to get some more money through a, a supplemental budget uh, as they close things out, hopefully by the second week in July. Just want to remind you that Election Day is Thursday. Uh, the polls are open in the town hall from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Please come out and cast your vote. Thank you. Okay, two more pieces of uh, introductory business before we start into the formal meeting. Uh, there are two uh, festivals that uh, need a little mention. Um, one is the Cummington Sheep and Wool Fair, which is this May 25th and 26th, I think, is that right? May 25th and 26th in Cummington. But uh, just so that you're aware of it, I've been asked to uh, announce that it's there and it's fun and there's a lot of good things going on there if you like sheep and sheep dogs and wool and all kinds of fabric and stuff like that. It's a big deal. But I've also been asked to announce that for that uh, Cummington Fair, uh, one of the organizers needs any scraps of wool fabric that you may have lying around, and also any farm animal cookie cutters that you might have. And if you have either scraps of uh, wool fabric or farm animal cookie cutters, see Caroline Filler, who is sitting right there. She's waving. And she's related, and so that's why I had to make this announcement <laughs> um, and uh, help out that, that. Now, is that good enough? Yeah? Not too embarrassed? No. Okay. Then there's the Festival of the Hills, which we all know about, Conway. So Sue would like to talk a little bit about that. Can we bring a microphone to her, I guess? Uh, 
Is that how we're, yeah, good, here it comes. So whenever, when, whenever anyone talks, we'll get a microphone to you. So don't start talking until you get the microphone. And you can still come up here if, if you're speaking at length about a specific article or you're the proponent of it, you can come up and talk like Sue's doing. But otherwise, you can stay right near where your seat is and go for it. All right. I promise I won't speak at length. Um, I'm Sue McDonald. I am co-chair of the Festival of the Hills along with Sheila Harrington. And uh, we're, I believe we're on our 57th festival possibly. I think I've lost track. But... The festival, uh, we're in dire need of volunteers. It's something that happens every year. This year it's scheduled for October 6th. We are looking for 119 volunteers to fill one hour slots. So we're not asking a lot of time from you. If you could, everybody could just, you know, give us just an hour of time. We would have what we need for volunteers and we can continue on with us. The, the festival raises money to give to graduating Conway seniors. And that's something that um, has been going on, again, for over 50 years. It's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I think the festival is, uh, you know, a wonderful part of this town. I think it's uh, something that people really identify with us. And we'd love to see it continue. We cannot do it without all of you. So thank you very much. Okay, are there any other announcements uh, someone needs to make to the town along these lines? Yes, sir. Uh, se several years ago, which was Irish Road Bowling. Cool. Uh, for those of you that remember <laughs> Irish Road Bowling. Uh, this year, we're opening it up to the town in a safer environment for adults and children, uh, sponsored by the Sportsman's Club, uh, to go for uh, scholarships as well. It'll be called Irish Field Croquet. Uh, we do not use mallet. We do use two-pound cannonballs. And there will be a series of wickets, uh, four people to a team from the ages of 9 to 95. And I guarantee you a good time and uh, a few laughs. So pay, uh, keep your eyes open for announcements in the paper and locally. Uh, this is uh, something that brings the town together. And uh, uh, I, I guarantee you a lot of fun. If not, June 15th, Town Ballfield. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any other announcements? OK, so. Um, a few words about the uh, rules of engagement for this e evening. You know, we go by uh, town meeting time, not Robert's rules uh, of order. Uh, town meeting time, which is a book put out by the New England Moderators Association that most uh, Commonwealth towns use for, the, for guiding the meeting. Um, we also go by the town bylaws to the extent they're applicable, uh, <clears throat> and by the infamous moderator rule, which quite simply stated as the moderator rules. So you've heard that before. You'll hear it again next year. Um, just to refresh your recollection of some of the uh, basic rules uh, and, and of how we proceed, uh, we'll take each article in the order that it's presented. Uh, unless someone uh, wants to move an article up or back, in which case we'll vote on moving that article. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and do so if it passes. Um, the budget, we'll, we'll take the budget. Uh, I'm going to do it a little differently this year. I'm just going to go right down uh, every uh, item very quickly, ask if there are comments on a particular item. If there are, we'll stop and have the discussion on, you know, item 114 or whatever it is, and, and then vote the whole thing at the end. Uh, or if there's a lot of discussion about a particular uh, line item, we can vote it uh, up or down if it's been amended, for instance. Um, we, <clears throat> we try to spend no more than 20 minutes on any article, uh, maybe other than the budget, if necessary. 10 minutes is better. Uh, I think that we can pretty much get out most points of view within 10 minutes. Um, and, uh, and, and we try not to have one person speak more than once on a particular uh, item unless a response is called for based on someone else's challenge to what that person said uh, in the interest of letting other people speak. Now, if no one else you know, wants to speak and that person 
uh, wants to speak again, I'll, I'll of course recognize that person, but I'm going to try to recognize uh, other people before getting back. Um, now, the, uh, if there is a voter uh, out there whose patience is sh even shorter than the moderator's, uh, then that voter can raise his or her hand, wait to be recognized by me, and then say, I call the question. Uh, at that point, uh, again, using the moderator rule, if I feel that the question is being called a little too soon, I might not call the question. Too bad. Just don't vote for me this Thursday. Um, <laughs> most likely, I will call the question. We'll have a two-thirds vote. And uh, if two-thirds of you have had enough, we'll vote. OK. Um, there is a lot of uh, uh, misunderstandings about what tabling or uh, the question is, or uh, what's the other terms that uh, come up besides tabling, uh, laying on the table, um, you know, passing, passing on it. It's all the same. You're trying to get the motion not passed, all right? It's, it's the same as, as, as voting no, essentially. So uh, no, no tricks there. If someone wants to uh, defeat a motion, they can either defeat it on the vote or they can move to lay it on the table and put it off, which means it's not coming back unless the select board or some petition of you puts it back on for the next year or a special meeting. Um, uh, every article has to be, has to be uh, made and, uh, and uh, seconded, of course. We all know that. Uh, no one who is not a resident of the town, you all have your little yellow, are they still yellow cards? Yeah, indicating that somebody, you've proved you know, to Mrs. Boyden out there that you're a real Conway resident. Uh, there will be times, a couple times tonight, I know that we're, we're going to ask people who are not residents and we vote uh, them the opportunity to speak here and we always vote to let them speak because we're a good democratic community. Uh, small d democratic, don't worry. Um, the, now, one, a couple, just a couple of last um, issues um, and that is on, I always remind people on, on uh, Voice votes. We go by voice votes. It's efficient. We don't have to have people raising their hands. Uh, when it's a two-thirds vote, if it's a two-thirds vote on a calling the question, I still do it by voice unless I'm really concerned. For those votes, that, and you'll see them in the articles, that, that require more than a majority vote, most of them are two-thirds, occasionally four-fifths, um, if, the, if the actual motion requires more than a majority, I'll, I'll appoint uh, tellers and you'll do it by show of hands. Um, so, uh, otherwise, it's, it's my sense of hearing, which, as you know, from 20 years is getting worse and worse, <laughs> but is still good enough to know whether it pa the motion passes or fails. If you strongly disagree with my interpretation of a voice vote, then you can raise your hand, be recognized, and ask for a sh show of hands, uh, and we'll do it, okay? All right. The moderator does not vote. So I can't be held responsible for any of the stupid things that are done tonight at this meeting, um, except for uh, breaking the tie. And then I could be 100% responsible for the stupid thing that I vote for, OK? So that's the way it works. Um, are there any questions about the procedures? If not, do we want to start with their first? Oh, want to, we're going to waive the re reading of the, uh, of the warrant, hopefully. Um, and do we, is there a motion to waive the reading of the entire warrant? Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's a vote. <laughs> we're off to a good start. OK, so you all should have. Uh, your warrants. If not, there's extra copies somewhere where, near where you came in. Um, and we'll start right now. The reports of the select board and treasurer and all that are in that document that um, Mr. O'Rourke uh, referenced earlier. And we're going to go right to Article 2 to hear the report of the Finance Committee uh, to raise and appropriate $6,037,000 and change uh, on the budget. And so let me, right now, Walk, is there a motion for the? Yep. We want to go through section A, B, C, and D. You want to do it that way? We want to do section A, B, C, and D. 
Okay. Is that you want to do that now? I had a, I had a different That's idea. That's not what you said. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. do it a little. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Oh, All right. So the motion's been made and, and seconded. Second. Someone. Okay. Here's what I like to do: is just to see if if, we, if this is a little more efficient and gives you more ability sure. to uh, uh, speak to the budget. Because a couple of people have wondered if they felt there wasn't really enough opportunity to speak to a specific item. Let me just quickly go down the line, and as I read off the the heading, starting with moderator, um, if someone wants to speak to it, ask a question about, you know, the, either the recommendation or the, you know, whatever, uh, raise your hand, and I'll kind of try to do it like this, and uh, we'll do it. So, anything on moderator? First one, 114. Anything on selectmen? Numbered 122. Anything on the finance committee? It's $300. Anything on the reserve fund, $40,000? Okay. Town audits, $1? Is that right? Am I reading that right? Mm -hmm. Assessor's budget, yes. The Madam Assessor. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is this on? Okay. Uh, thank you. The there are changes in this year's budget. In the first line, which is generally speaking our operating budget, we need more postage. So this $465 there. However, in the second line, salary and wages, we have a couple of changes. One is the 2.5% across the board increase that was voted by the Finance Committee for everyone uh, working for the town. That accounts for about $1,230 of that. The rest is to see if we can get a trainee to come in to begin to learn my job as administrative assessor, my office job, so that in several years, they would be in the position to slide in pretty seamlessly. We've put in for this year six hours a week for a trainee and four hours a week for me to work with them. Um, it's an effort, as I say, to try and make it smooth. It's a comprehensive, complex job, and so I hope that uh, you'll feel that we're trying to think ahead and work in the best interests of the town by doing so. When will you hit 40 years of being an assessor? <laughs> no, no. I went on the board in 1990. Yes. Okay. But as far as a trainee is concerned, I'm still on the sunny side of 70, but it's getting a little low in the west. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's a really good line. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Assessor salary wages, 141, 58,000. Treasurer collector, 16,000, 17,000. Treasurer collector salary wages, 60,000. Town administrator, 18, and administrator salary and wages, 88,000. Town uh, legal, 11,000. Oh. Yes, sir. Find a microphone. <coughs> Please state your name, and uh, maybe if you want, where you live. Mike Herculonis, uh, Roaring Brook Road. Um, on the note on the cover of the warrant this year, there was a 2.5% increase for everybody's pay. And I noticed that some of these are more than 2.5% if, if you do the math. And my question really is, is, is it just 2.5% across the board, or is there reviews of the employees? So people that are should get a raise, get a raise, and people that don't, don't, is their reviews. We have a personnel committee. Who wants to speak to this? Yeah, Tom. Do you have a microphone? Yeah, you do, okay. Uh, I can speak to the town administrator line. Uh, my own raise is per contract, not per the 2.5%, and that was 3% this year. And also, my assistant is getting a raise from $18 an hour to $20 an hour, uh, which is pretty cheap for the work. Okay. Any other questions on that line item? Okay. So moving on. Uh, information technology, about $30,000. Um, town clerk and town clerk's salary and wages, 13000 and 35000 roughly. Yes. 
Stand up, please. Microphone. Thank you. Uh, Jim Bosman, Academy Hill Road. I'm just wondering, uh, between the two town clerk line items, I see a 19% increase. So, can someone speak to that? If someone from the, who wants to speak to that, there's, if you look at the, you know, one's down 3,000 and the other's up 11,000, and I take it the math comes to whatever percent you said. Who wants to speak yeah. to that? Yeah. Uh, the one that's down is because that line included uh, uh, wages for an assistant, uh, which uh, is now no longer proposed. Uh, instead, the other one is up uh, because that is money uh, for, that is intended uh, for the new town clerk to hire uh, as a consultant someone who just might know something about town clerking in Conway uh, to make a smooth transition. Uh, this is one of the most important positions in town. A lot of the work is done more or less behind the scenes and making the elections happen. Um, I like to call the town clerk the guardian of democracy. Uh, so it's really important that the transition be smooth. And there's a lot of uh, work that has to be done. And this will ensure uh, that uh, for an equivalent of, uh, I think it's um, eight hours a week for six months, however that ends up being used. That, that's the amount uh, of the the rise in the operations, and it's in the operations budget because this person would be a, now a uh, professional consultant rather than on salary part of the staff. So that part of it's going down. The consultant part is going up. That should come back down again next year. Okay, any other questions on that? Oh, you satisfied? Way in the back. Is it, are you? Or are you just? Wait, uh, I guess not. I guess not. I'm mistaken on an arm up there. Okay. Any other questions on this uh, this item? No. Okay. So we're now down to register of elections. 161. Eight, about nine thousand uh, dollars. ZBA, a com, you know, conservation commission. Nine thousand dollars. Personnel. Two hundred dollars. Trying to both read and look at the same time here. Building maintenance. Fifty-six thousand. Building maintenance wages, 18,000. Town insurance, 73,000. Police, base, uh, police budget, 18,000. And police salary and wages, 110,000. And uh, I forgot to introduce Chief Wimet, who I can see right there in his uniform, in case any of you get rowdy. He and I already have it worked out, the hand signal that I give him to throw you out. Uh, <laughs> fire. 36,000, yes, Mr. Bosman. Microphone over, thank you. Uh, Jim Bosman again, Academy Hill Road. I'm just curious about the increase in the fire on the, uh, I guess it's on the wages line item, it's a 42% increase. Yeah. Is the fire chief gonna address this? Yeah, that way in the back there. Okay, Chief. I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Starting this next fiscal year is the first time in the history of the town and county we're going to start paying our firefighters for some of their training. They're very dedicated people. They, they train two nights a week. We're going to pay them for one night a week, which is three hours, and for a fire academy course that we have every year. We go to several of them, we're going to pay them for one to start with for this first fiscal year. I mean, some of us want this pay, some don't, but we have finally discovered that across the state of Massachusetts, we're one of the very few towns that were never paying our firefighters for training. So I'm um, pleased that we're going to do that. And just so you know, uh, you have 28 very dedicated people in the fire department, and I think they deserve that little bit of money. Thank you. So, can we, can we, add so we need to add something to that answer. Any other questions or comments on that, on Bob Baker's? Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. So, just, just so that people know, um, the, the paying the firefighters for training is, is legally required by the state. It's been legally required for years, 
um, and we haven't done it. So thank you, fire department members, for not suing the town when you could have. Um. <laughs> okay, and in the spirit of things, when do you hit 40 years, Bob? <laughs> no. All right. So we're now down to, uh, I guess we covered fire, salary, and wages also in that discussion. Ambulance, 25000 Tree and Dog Warden, 7500 Highway, 256000 and the 260000 in salary and wages. Winter Roads, 105000 Winter Road wages, wages 20000 roughly. Board of Health, 140,000, 60,000 for salary and wages for the Board of Health. Human services for veterans, et cetera, is 137. 8,000 for historical commission. No, four, four, whoop, did I mix that? Um, yeah. Parks and recreation and trails, 400 for historic commission. Debt service, which we really can't comment too much, we have to pay that, 33,000. That's on bonds that we've issued in the past for various capital projects and school. Uh, Franklin Regional Council of Govern Government, town nurse, 52,000. And employee costs altogether, I guess that's $668,468. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mary. What's employee costs? What is that line? It's it's employee costs. It's paying everything. Yeah. A lot of that is uh, health care. Uh, some of it's uh, pension. The health, the health department's transportation uh, attendance. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, Mary, is that sufficient? Okay. I want you all to take a look at Mary McClintock's T-shirt she's wearing. It's a map of Idaho, Maine, which is where I leave to go for, for the next four months next week. Yeah, five miles off the coast. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm right there in the northernmost tip on her T-shirt there. Um, okay. You want to vote this whole group right now? And then we'll go to the schools, because I think people want to speak to the schools. Uh, so. Uh, I haven't heard any significant requests for changes, so shall we ready to vote? All those in favor of those items that are under the FY 2020 recommendation, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's a vote. <clears throat> All right. Next, uh, you see the next three groups, B, C, and D. So we'll take B, Grammar School Operating and Transport, up 1.8 million and 83,000. Uh, typically, someone from the school board speaks. Is, does someone want to? And it also, if there's someone that uh, needs to be admitted to the secret society of Conway. <laughs> yes? No? That would be you. The, the tie. Yes. So shall we, shall we recognize the superintendent? Yes, we shall. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You're recognized. Good evening. I'm Darius Modesto, your new superintendent. Um, it's a straightforward budget. You're looking at a $43,000 increase, which is basically um, salaries of union and non-union personnel. And you look at that line, it pretty much carries across. Um, all their lines are moderate growth, but no, no other real standouts. A couple hundred dollars here, a couple, minus a couple hundred dollars there. So it's really about salaries of our employees. Any questions for the superintendent? OK. You might have gathered that if you keep wearing that tie, we might not allow you to speak next year or the year after. No, any this is Conway. This, this isn't South Deerfield, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> all, all those in favor of the Conway school budget signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, good. Frontier, 1.478 million and 54,000 in transportation. Do we also have someone from Frontier that wishes to speak <laughs> about Frontier? Um. Ah, <laughs> good. All right. All right. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Figuring this out. 
<laughs> yeah. I'll lose the t-shirt too. Yeah. Right. Um, I first want to uh, introduce George Lanidis. I just he's the new principal, just so you can say hello. It's his first first. No, he, no tie, had, I know. Yeah, he's had quite the uh, experience going to all four towns, and this one is quite the, the special one in how you conduct your meetings. Um, just as a friendly, it's a nice atmosphere. Um, not to beat up on Deerfield. Um, Why not? So, right, uh, right, because it's just been televised. Been that's oh, oh, yeah. Um, I forgot. So, yeah, so you're looking at this huge increase, and you're saying, what is going on here? Um, you as a town have been, um, you're subject to um, the assessments that are set by the state. And so you're looking at assessments that all the other towns were, um, let me just kind of get my numbers here, were in the low, um, in the single low digits. You know, the other town's assessments were 1.08, uh, 0.22, um, and you got 9.95 increase based on what the state looked at as your, and I may have to, I may have to go to Phil on this because he called when he saw these numbers outraged and he tried to march it up the ladder and kind of was marched back down. Um, but the way they figure out your wealth as a town and how it goes into the assessment put our, our modest growth year of the frontier budget um, extremely high on this community. And so there's nothing that we can do other than lowering the overall assessment, meaning cutting our budget to lower your budget, but within our budget was there was not many growth other than transportation. Um, in the new transportation contract, what, the, what we did is we put a larger, a larger share of the growth into the frontier contract, and not in no growth in the elementary contract, because the state reimbursed transportation for regional districts, and so we kind of were able to do that with you know with Gribco or the vendor, um, in order to you know obviously save the most money within any. Um, increase in that line item. Phil, is there anything you want to talk about regarding, because you did talk with the state trying to find out what Yeah, I mean, I, um, I've talked to the state now. I've testified before the Joint Committee on Education on this. Um, uh, so basically, w the way that your budget works, your school budgets works, it, there's your school budget, but then there's underneath that, there's something called a foundation budget. And the increase this year is almost entirely in the foundation budget. And I thought it was particularly unfair to our town, and, um, and I've tried to understand it, and I've tried to comment on it, and I've tried to do something about it. Um, but basically, the way that your foundation budget is calculated has to do with the value of your property in town, but it also has to do with the value of the aggregate income in your town. And uh, to me, that's extraordinarily unfair because you're, this town does not get to tax people on their income, we only can tax property. So to be assessed, your school budget, part of your school budget, based on incomes in the town, um, it just, it's, it's ex extraordinarily unfair. And so when, when the state comes out and they say, your town had a municipal growth rate approaching 5%, um, you think that's really good news. But then you get a bill for your chapter, your increase in Chapter 70 foundation budget vis-a-vis -vis relative to your, the other three towns in our district. So the vast majority of this is because our town prospered last year. We had, uh, you know, Comcast paid more. The, uh, the Trans Canada is generating power again. They paid more. And then we had a few wealthy taxpayers that moved into town. And the result of that is that uh, all of us pay more in our foundation budget. Um, it's still not, you know, we still grew more than we're having to pay, but the, I mean, I was on the Frontier Budget Committee. I was expecting a much gentler budget for our town because the budget itself is pretty, it w was really reasonable. Um, uh, but when you start out this foundation process, before you even get to the school budget itself, you, in, e you, you in essence, are having to owe your other three towns money. Um, based on what the split was the last time. So, uh, you know, I, and, I, and I've testified um, before the Joint Committee that if they would just change it from just aggregate income to uh, median income, it would smooth out the peaks and valleys and not cost the state hardly a penny. But, um, you know, we'll see where that goes. The thing is that the thing, it, this stuff is so extraordinarily complicated. Most of our legislators can't really bring themselves to understand it. Um, 
So we'll, we'll see. Our state senator, Adam Hines, has been really good with this issue, so we're hoping that he can help us. Are there questions? Yes, sir. Could you stand up? And here's the mic coming right at you. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Axelson, 197 Shelburne Falls Road. I've never heard of this before. Just hold it a little closer to you. Um, I've never heard of this before. Yeah. Where does this money go? Where does the money go? Yeah, who gets it? The school. The foundation money. The foundation money is part of the school budget. So it is what funds the school, but the, a large portion of our foundation increase was what the other three towns used to pay, but now because our town increased in value so much more than the other three towns did, um, they rejigger that and we pay more. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. It, no. it's, we, 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 yeah. we it, had sort of a similar issue with the tech school, our, our allocation on the tech school, something like that, didn't we, as well? Where we had a pretty high... Uh, anyway, it's... So we got to find those three or four people, the wealthy people who live in town, and kick them out. <laughs> 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 Just saying. They still have to pay the taxes on the real estate, but they'd have to file their taxes somewhere else. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I see one right here, Mr. Fenton. So what do we do about it, Phil? Do we vote it down? Yeah, so here's the thing. We are the fourth town to vote the school budget. And the way that our regional agreement works is when the majority of towns vote the budget, then the budget is voted. So the other three towns have already voted yes on this budget. I wonder so, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so even the town that, did a two, that needed a two-and-a-half prop override for their budget, when they saw the numbers, they got the two-and-a-half override through. Um, so the budget has already, we can vote it no, and it still will get passed. It is passed as we speak. It is a passed budget. So we're going to now pretend to vote either for or against this budget, and it's not going to make a bit of difference because we're going to get taxed on it. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. To extend our uh, outrage at this, do we have the numbers cost per student for each of the four towns? No. <clears throat> Straightforward, no, we don't have, you want the cost, the average cost per student by town. Yeah, we can, we can put that together. Where should I put it? Well, I think probably having it each year from now on would be a, a, an interesting number just okay. to see how much more per student we're paying. I think that's what we're going to see right. uh, than the other three towns. Right. And understand that your assessment each year is recalibrated every year. Yeah. And because you have Upward. more money coming in this year, it's, I mean, another way of looking at what Phil was explaining is when you get, you get taxed more when you make more. And so the same kind of thing has happened to this community is that money that came in, your bump won't be 5% next year. I mean, I can get those numbers for you, but it's, this is not something that will be consistent every year. It, go, it goes every, it goes, well, it always, yeah, it goes, it won't, it'll, you know, but your overall percentage of what your assessment of Frontier is changes from year to year. And there are other towns that get hit. What's I that? have the information if you want to. Okay. Yeah, we do see it. Hands, do, please, like show of hands when yeah, you want do. to speak. Yes. I have the information if you want. Go ahead. Yeah, he's got it. Alan Singer, uh, Finance Committee Chair. Is that mic on? Is it on now? Yeah. yeah. So for the fiscal year 20 budget, Conway's portion is $1,020,606, which represents about 12%. And then uh, Deerfield is $2,454,641. Sunland, $1,119,887. And Waitley, $605,737. In terms of projected enrollments, we have in uh, Conway, 110 students at the Frontier Regional School, 271 for Deerfield, 130 for Sunderland, and 66 for Waitley. So if, we're, if our budget is, did you say 12% of the overall budget? Correct. Can you quickly say how many, what percentage the number of students is of the no, overall number of students? Uh, 110 at oh, Frontier. Either my calculator, hold on. So we're measuring this against 12%, right? Yeah. Correct. 
students in the student population. So, That's 19%. Uh, so we have 19% of the students, but 12% no. we pay 12%. It doesn't make sense. We, this, I'm we going actually over the FY20 change in the foundation enrollment. I'm going over the foundation enrollment formula. Yeah, really we, we, we hover at around 15% of Frontier, right. um, student-wise. Uh, the, the, I, I believe this year the student, the Conway students at Frontier, are 110. Yes, 110. 110. Um, and so, so the number of the foundation budget is related to that, and um, the, the 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 cost per student. We are. As, as far as I can recall from the budget meetings, we are right at about the state average, which was 19. Well, but this softens the blow a little bit because what it's saying is that our percentage of the overall budget is less than our current percentage of the student population. So that makes it a little more palatable, right? You agree with me on that? If we've got 15 or 16 percent of the students and we're paying 12 percent of the budget, it's a, and that's a circumstance of how many kids there are in yeah. Conway going there. Yeah. There's um, an estimate in the increase. We don't get in charged by the student. Yeah. We get charged by the income. And in, uh, there's an increase in 13 students. So if there's anything that was discovered from this foundation increase, was that 13 students mysteriously appeared in the, in the estimation for the foundation? Maybe it was those three or four rich families. They all had a lot of kids. Uh. Yes, Mr. Bosman. Yeah, Jim Bosman again. Um, correct me if I'm not, but don't the doesn't the distribution between the four towns also get uh, modified by the five-year enrollment, ro five-year rolling enrollment? So yeah. even though we have that many students this now, year, it'll catch we up may to have us. had um, fewer Less than the, the or, you know, in other years or whatever, years. right? Okay. Uh, that, and that's true. Yes. There's, yes. This stuff gets really wonky and really, you know, you get really deep in the weeds talking about it. Um, the, w what... What I did want to just make clear is that it's not the administration. This is this budget is not at all this administration's fault. Okay. Um, Any other questions or comments on something that we can't do anything about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, Hope Crowley is up at uh, 1490 Main Poland Road, and uh, it just seems like uh, this is we're being asked to say yay to something that is admittedly very complicated and Byzantine, and we're being told that we have no, we might as well just go along with it because everybody else has voted for it, and I would just suggest that, you know, we, we can also, as a town, say no. We, we just as a statement, we don't necessarily go along with it. I just want to make sure that we're not just acting like sheep and saying, well, we all have to go along with it because everyone else did. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Ready to vote? All those in favor of the frontier budget, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, it's more than, more than majority. It passes. All right. Technical schools. Is someone from the tech schools, either school committee or another tie? Another tie. You need to be recognized. We're Shall we allow him to speak? Yes. yes. Told me okay. This Go ahead. All set. What would you like me to speak on? The any any comments you have on the technical school budget? Uh, so us? right now for Franklin County Technical School. Could you stand school, up so I can yeah, all absolutely. see you and see the tie you're wearing? <laughs> my, my daughter picked it out. She's six. She thought it was pretty nice and knew I was going someplace special that I don't usually go to. So There. All right. All I'm right, not going to take that one off. Uh, your local assessment for this coming year is one hundred and twelve thousand dollars and one hundred and twelve three hundred and eighty. One twelve one hundred and twelve thousand three hundred and eighty dollars. Thank you. So that represents a decrease of about fifty one thousand dollars for Franklin County Tech. I see that it says uh, a sixty six thousand yes. dollar decrease yes. overall. I assume that has something to do with students attending Smith. But oh yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Smith vote the vote school in Northampton. How many students do we have? Do you know? Yes. Uh, you have six students right now attending the tech. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the representative of the tech school? Franklin County Tech School. Nope. Ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's a vote. Okay. Thank you. All right. Article 3. Is there a motion for Article 3? 
I move that the town approve capital borrowing by the Frontier Regional School District as voted by Frontier Regional School District Committee for $1,826,664 to pay the cost of the district's capital improvements program, including the payment of $630,000 to pay costs of designing and constructing a new track, including all related oversight, and $1,196,664 to pay costs of various other capital improvements, including HVAC upgrades, upgrades to the LMC, uh, carpet replacement, parking lot repaving and repairs of related parking structures, roof repairs, and costs of oversight associated with each of the foregoing projects. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. <laughs> yes, sir. David Ross, uh, South Deerfield Road. I'm very sorry for the non sequitur. I hope this doesn't break the rules. I'm a late arrival, and I noticed that there's a Subaru out back with its flashers on. I didn't want anyone to get a, a, a lost battery. License plate 698YY7. Very sorry for the interruption. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Did you hear that? Did you? Did everyone hear what he said? There's a car with flashing lights on out there? Subaru. Subaru? Gray Subaru? You get lights are flashing. Someone recognize? Kenny. Just quickly, uh, with the acronym today, what is an LMC? Library Maintenance. It's library and Media Library and Media Center. Library and Media Center is LMC. Other questions about the capital expenditure program that uh, Frontier is undertaking? Ready? Mary? Do we have a guess about what this will cost to Conway over time in terms of borrowing and Bond, paying? Bond, the interest. Yeah, interest, that kind of stuff. Do we know? Anybody want to speak to that? Oh, yes, yes sir. So again, basically the uh, Conway right now shares about 15%, so this is about $275,000 over 10 years. And so you're, you're basically looking at $27,000 a year. Um, I can talk more about this if people want more about it, or if people are satisfied with the handout and such, I can be quiet and we can move on, whatever you want. Oh, yeah, let's see, let's see if we want more discussion. Uh, Leewood, Leewood, Gamashfield Road. When would this start to be... Uh, Paid out. Paid to All right, let me give a quick overview of this then because it'll make people feel more comfortable. I want you to be comfortable about this. So basically, about two years ago, we started a, we created a subcommittee made up of school committee members and select board members to look at the capital improvements at Frontier Regional. The, the building is, you know, at that point was about 20 years old and we're starting to get some big capital expenditures coming down the road. We're starting to plan out for them. And the idea was how are we going to address the small and the larger capital needs of Frontier as the building gets older. Um, so we put together a 10-year plan and we pulled out the largest um, expenditures, that, um, the largest cost for the, um, for the district. Um, and the smaller costs we put into, we're going to do out of E&D and out of general budget. So this committee put together not only a, um, a plan to take care of these capital needs, but how to oversee the governance of this plan. The committee will stay together um, through these projects to make sure that the oversight that this money is going to these projects and not a slush fund to do whatever we want up, up at Frontier. So, um, and uh, I just want to go through, let me show you getting all my points here. Um, your membership was Bob Armstrong and Phil Cantor, who are on the committee. Thank you both for all your work on that. Um, and so basically we'll be taking a series of notes over the 10 years for each project. These projects would not fall under one general contractor, so as you can see, they're very different in scope. Um, and so as we do each one of the, the uh, projects, we'll take out a loan um, in order to, to uh, get those projects done and be paid out over 10 years. So that's kind of the, the funding formula on that. Um, that's kind of overall, I need, and I need four out of four towns on this one. Unlike the school budget, your, your vote very much does count tonight on this. <laughs> Okay, other questions for the superintendent or generally have, before we vote? Right here. I have, oh, right here. Sorry. Uh, I have a copy of the October 16th report for the uh, capital subcommittee. 
and the total estimate, including interest on borrowings, is $4,077,340. The estimated Conway portion of $673,785 represents about 16.5%. Okay, and that's payable over an average of how many years? Ten years. Ten years. On a, yeah. Lee? I was just going to ask again, beginning Please. when? Next year? At the earliest. Fiscal 2020? I didn't answer that. Thank you. Um, basically, this does not, it takes about a year to get this, I have to get this bonding certified. It's going to take me another three or four months. And then I got to kind of line up the projects. And then um, payment on the notes are due 12 months after, um, after you, you, you take them out. So we actually, if we were going to redo the track, which is probably one of the bigger things on the list and, and it needs to be replaced, I mean, we're not going to get to that till next summer. And many of these projects have to shut down the building or areas of the building in order to do. So they're going to take place during the summer, which is in the next fiscal year. So if we could actually start them next year and actually not have the payment actually come out start until to the FY22 budget season, depending on the timing of getting things done. So it's going to be rolled out in a series of steps because there are um, many different projects in the oversight of such projects. We don't want to spend a lot of capital on um, overseeing multiple projects at once, but be able to you know, handle what we can handle um, as we go through that. And so, again, that's something that the subcommittee is going to have to oversee. Okay, ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's a unanimous vote. Article 4. Is there a motion for Article 4? Yes. I move that the town transfer $200,000 from capital stabilization account uh, to the general fund for the purchase of a replacement truck for the town's 1998 Volvo autocar. Is there a second? Second. Okay, this is, requires a two-thirds vote. So I think we have to have the uh, tellers, I have to point four people, two for each side. We have volunteers, two people on either side that will volunteer to count the hands. If you don't have volunteers, then I'll volunteer someone myself. <laughs> Who we got? We'll count. There's one volunteer here. I have one back there. I need two more, one from this side, someone else from this side. Going once, going okay, twice. Who's going, to, who's going to volunteer? Okay, Mr. French, you're on. <laughs> and over here, Walter. There. All right. So you've got Seal and you two. Colleen, Russ. All right. So uh, discussion. We're not going to vote yet, but you guys can get ready. Um, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. Bye. Okay, Ruth. Microphone right here. We need a microphone right there, right in front here. See where I'm pointing? Yeah. Okay, he's got it. Thank you. I'd like to address this article, but I need to preface it by saying that I put a lot of thought into the highway facility and finally decided to vote in favor of it, of Articles 5 and 6. And I'm convinced that the committee has explored alternatives very creatively as we ask them to do. But I am still troubled, and I'm not the only one, about paying for the rest of the construction. $710,000, if passed tonight, will get halfway through the building project. You're talking about the combined two articles? Articles, yeah, articles uh, five which, and six. Which we're not voting on a combined basis. Right. When it's no, I'm not. We're talking about well, article five. But she I'm talking she about slipped in. Uh, let four. me oh, finish. Four. We're on four right now, the replacement of the truck. L yeah. I'm talking about article four. Yeah. This is why I'm commenting on Article 4, is my concern about paying for Articles 5 and, five six. and 6, well, the, what happens after the, re, the project and 5 and 6 are, have um, finished. And my personal solution to funding the entire project will be to stop approving all highway department equipment purchases until the building project is completed. <laughs> My intent for the department is to step to the back of the line for a few years and make do with their yearly operating budget and salaries 
for which over $641,000 was just approved for 2020. I'll be voting against Article 4 and the nearly $300,000 in additional highway equipment articles this year and next year and the next with the expectation that the equivalent money should be put toward the building project. Article 8 is not enough in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Sweet. Good evening, I'm Ron Sweet. When I was hired as a highway superintendent in 2013, my goal was to do my best to have the least impact on the town's budget while maintaining a high functioning fleet of vehicles and equipment. The new, tr the new truck market at the time had been very unpredictable with emissions and electronic issues for many years. So I held off replacing any of our town trucks at that time. Now, the truck market has seemingly come around to being a better, more um, dependable trucks now that they got some of the issues straightened out with the uh, emissions and electronics. So I feel now is the time to start replacing. Our fleet, current fleet has served us well, but it's aging. It's all of our trucks are, or most of our trucks are mid 90s to late 90s. And parts are getting very hard to get for them when they break down and, and it gets costly trying to repair these trucks. Um, they've served us very well, and, but now's the time to move forward. And from what Ruth was saying as far as putting it off, the longer we wait, the more money the town's going to be wasting trying to keep the trucks that we have going. So we really need to start now. And I have actually asked to pass over articles 15 and 16 to help address some of like Ruth's concerns were. Okay, any questions for Mr. Sweet? Me... Gen general comment, okay. Yep, Peter. Uh, Peter Jeswald, Old Cricket Hill Road. Um, I've lived in town from, from 1971 to present with the exception of a couple of years and I've been to a lot of town meetings and I've seen a lot of highway garage, uh, highway department articles come before us. And I've been working with, with Ron uh, for the last several months on the building committee, as you know, and I've learned a few things about Ron. One, Ron is really smart. Two, he works really hard at his job. And three, he really cares about this town. Sometimes it seems to me that the highway department, and I think maybe Mr. Baker can speak to this, although it's a, our job, it's sometimes a thankless job. And I just want everybody to know that I think Ron has the best interest in town, of the town, in, in his thoughts and in his actions. So just consider that when you, when you take your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments right there? In the, yes, you. Yep. Microphone is coming. Hold on just a sec. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Stowe. I live on um, South Deerfield. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And last year when we, when we were having this conversation, it was kind of similar because um, there are a bunch of different article, articles. And tonight we have 4, 10, 15, 16, and 17. And what was requested a year ago was a five-year plan. And if I heard right, Mr. Sweet, you said that you, there was a plan that you'd been working on and that within 48 hours you'd have it posted on the town website. And um, I didn't see it posted. And so what I would like tonight, is, and I realize this is out of order, but I would like the explanation of 
what we went through last year of each one of are you buying a used machine for each one? What is it something that perhaps could be leased instead of bought? And I'd really like that information. Thank you. Ron, you want to respond? Well, I didn't get it on. I actually, I said two weeks, and I didn't get it on in two weeks. It has been up for at least six months now, maybe eight months on, my, on the highway page. There, there is a uh, place where you can click on and see what my replacement plan is. It is for new equipment. And to answer your question to leasing, leasing is just another way of financing it. So if the town wants to pay the finance, Mm -hmm. A finance on replacing equipment and leasing would be an option, but personally, I think that if the town is going to start borrowing money to pay for things, we're just going to keep getting farther behind. Other comments right here? Yes? No, uh, no well, okay. And then right next, yeah. Yeah, that's who will. Yeah. Um, probably going to think me nuts about this, but I'm pretty sure that within 10 years, the entire fleet will be electric, and a large part of it will all also be autonomous. We're, we're on the edge of a huge transition in transportation, uh, and those transitions usually take about 10 years. You think about cell phones and how they came about, or flat screen TVs. They used to be $7,000 a piece, and then all of a sudden, they're a few hundred bucks. Something similar is happening because the price of batteries is dropping very rapidly. 2020, for a long time, has been identified as the year at which it will be possible to build an electric vehicle that is cost equivalent to a gas vehicle. And shortly after that, things are really going to go nuts. So I strongly think that we need to be very careful about buying new vehicles and we should consider leasing anything to put off a dis uh, if, if we get invested in a lot of new equipment, once electric becomes the thing, that equipment will simply be junked. It will have no value. It might even have negative value. Go ahead. Okay, to answer your on that is the life now of a dump truck is estimated around 12 years. So what you're saying is the truck uh, electric's 10 years away. So this truck would almost use its whole useful life before electric's even here. So, and again, leasing is an expense. It's a financing option. It's not, it's not a um, purchase. Well, you end up probably ending it owning it in the end, but you still pay interest on the monies for it. Other comments? Yes, Mr. Bosman. Uh, I'm not sure who to address this question to, but what is the, I didn't catch what the funding source was when you did the motion, and what is the funding source again? And Capital stabilization. And how, what we've got in that, um, in that account tonight. Yeah, what's in the, in the capital stabilization account? Currently, we have $476,477. Okay. Any other questions? Ready to vote? Nope, way over there. Yes, sir. Ron Hawks, Academy Hill. <clears throat> I just wonder what's going to happen to the old truck. <laughs> it doesn't say that in a warrant. When, from now on, when we do the article, replacement will mean, or yes, replacement means that we'll be re replacing the vehicle that were put up. Like for the and trading account. in the old? And then if it says purchase, that means it will be buying something new that's not replacing anything. So we will make that very clear from now on. Okay, ma'am, right next to, almost next to Mr. Heather Rose, Ashfield Road. Um, 
I was just on the website looking for the five-year plan and I didn't see it. Where was that located, please? It's, I believe it's listed as vehicle replacement. I, I know it's there. It's, it might not be up, it's not under plan. It doesn't say plan. It's under highway pay. Thank you. Other questions or comments before we vote, Mr. Baker? I've tossed these articles around in my mind for the last few months, since they come out, not a couple months, but a couple of weeks. And Mr. Sweet, I think, is right as far as the purchase of the new town dump truck. We all know we like to have our roads plowed faster, quicker, and more efficient. And with a piece of junk the guy's driving, it's not going to get done very fast. I have also looked at all the other articles that the highway department has asked for and thought about those in my mind. And Mr. Sweet has almost gone all the way tonight recommending that two of them be passed over. I would recommend that all three of the other articles be passed over and to purchase the highway truck. Okay, ready to vote? Got your cards handy? All those in favor, hold them up high so that the tellers can count. In favor of the article, in favor of the 200000 $200,000. $200, hold them up until they until I indicate that they've made their counts. Do we have a calculator? It's still easily passed. Count us, Walter. You two in agreement? The left, on my left, this group can put their hands down. Okay, all those opposed, hold your cards up. Wow, we could have done it by voice. Yeah. All right, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, Article 5, two-thirds vote. So you guys can sit down for about a minute or five. Is there a motion on Article 5? I move that the town transfer $650,000 from the highway garage stabilization account to the general fund to design and build a cold storage highway building, including developing bid documents as necessary, preparing the site, and constructing the building. Is there a second? Ready to vote? Okay, who's, wanna, who's gonna speak to this article? Walter? I'm Walter Goodridge, uh, South Deerfield Road. Um, first, I want to apologize for this cold storage business. That was a screw up for sure. What, we are not planning to go into the fur storage <laughs> business for the town of Conway. What we should have said is a garage, an unheated garage. That's what we're talking about here. And I think it probably makes sense to talk about this building as mentioned in Article 5, along with the building mentioned in Article 6. Because what we're talking about is a single project for the town. They are split up for a reason that I think was pretty well explained here. Um, so I see some nods going on there, okay. Um, I spoke several times to someone at the Attorney General's office where the, the Department of Procurement and Municipal 
procurement is pretty tough. And uh, we have found, I think, a very good and straightforward way to avoid some of the hassle that the previous committee had. Um, and it's largely, but not entirely, largely because of this split into two projects. Um, mentioning the previous committee, I want to say that we have benefited a lot from the work they did. We have specifications, we have drawings, and we have come quite a long way. So I think while all of us felt a little disappointed that we spent quite a lot of money to go through this last time, a lot of that has been recouped because it saved us an awful lot of trouble. And I think you'll see pretty early on in the right of here uh, that the um, fees that we are going to pay designers for this time around of $7,000 and $29,200 are about 100000 less than we were quoted several months ago by the lead designer of the 2014 study. So I mentioned committee, the past committee. I do want to mention the present committee just for a second because these guys and women have really done a great job. Hank Horseman is sitting right here. Hank knows about construction. He was an electrician. He worked at Smith College for many years. He was involved in a lot of construction projects. Peter Jeswald right next to him here. You all know, I'm sure. Peter is a designer. Peter has built buildings. Peter's worked as a carpenter. Peter and I designed and were uh, the general contractors for a private school in Greenfield. Peter has written books, given lectures. So, <laughs> sorry. Okay, Ken Romet. Ken was on the last committee. Ken's been a tradesman, plumbing and heating for a very long time. He knows a lot about plumbing and heating, of course, but a lot about a lot of other stuff, too. And, okay. And uh, also, um, we have Ron, Ron who just spoke, Ron Sweet. Before Ron worked for the town, he was working with equipment for many, many years. He had his own business. He was involved in construction as well. And Liv Wyatt, who gets credit for this illustration, she whipped this off very quickly, has been an architect for many, many years. Where is Liv? Over here? Over here on the left, your left. There she is, right over there. And so she works for Kuhn, Kuhn Riddle in Amherst, architectural firm. So she's bring a lot, brought a lot of expertise too. I mention this partly just to say that I think our approach has been to be practical. We've really wanted to roll up our sleeves, not only in the work that we've done and the way we've done our work, but also in the way we envision this work going forward. Um, Ron had a tremendous idea in suggesting that the town road crew do the excavation for this job. That's going to save us a tremendous amount of money. The procurement rules that are particularly onerous are those that involve paying prevailing wage. Prevailing wage determines what a contractor working for a municipality has to bill for labor. And it's, it's uniform throughout the whole state. So we would have to pay a laborer the same amount here in Conway, or not only a laborer, anybody, the same amount in Conway as in Boston. And with that labor, by the way, would probably get more than $50 an hour. And other jobs, of course, would go for more. So I think that uh, that kind of thinking has sort of informed the way we've gone about this. How can we do it here in Conway? How can we do it cheaper? And we've had a real headwind because construction costs have gone up tremendously. They've averaged about 4% a year. So since the proposal in 2014, 
we have seen about a 20% increase in construction costs. So it's been a real fight for us just to overcome that, that increase. All right, so I think I've pretty much touched upon all the general stuff. I do want to correct some numbers. On the back page, for those of you who had the guts to look at this, <laughs> there are a few numbers that uh, are not accurate or they don't accurately pertain to our situation. These were numbers were given to me by Joe Markarian. He works for the FERCOG uh, uh, administration in Greenfield. He's the municipal finance expert. In the column, that's the first column of numbers, maintenance building including excavation. That will be more than the 1,280. It'll be 1,000, as we see now, 494, 500, probably. This hasn't been designed yet. It hasn't gone out to bid yet. We're going to come back with this. this. These are just guidelines, so I don't think it's super critical that these numbers be accurate. But interestingly enough, the next one down, borrowing authorization, that was a number that he and I pulled out of the air a few weeks ago. It's now looking more like a million and $80,000 less. But based on that higher number, you'll see the yellow line. That's highlighting what a household with a home valued at $300,000 would pay through the 15 years that Joe suggested we consider. And over on the very right, you'll see it's $120 per year that they, that homeowner or those homeowners will average. That 120 bucks is 10 bucks a month. So as I said somewhere else in this write-up, you know, a lot of us spend that much for coffee. So I think that if we're willing to spend a little bit of money on these two buildings, and again, I emphasize two buildings, I know that Mary has felt very strongly, and perhaps some others, that this should be uh, done in a different order, where we do the maintenance building before the storage building. Um, but there are a lot of reasons, good reasons, I'd say, for doing the uh, storage building first. One is that we can. If we pass this Article 5 tonight, Ron can get busy with excavating absolutely as soon as he's ready. He will need nothing else because the last committee has given us a terrific site plan. It's relevant to what we're going to do in the future. If that building were to be built after the maintenance building, the soonest it could start would be next year sometime. And if, and, and if we were to start it then, probably Ron would not have enough time to do the excavating. The plan now is to run it right through the whole summer and be ready while the designers are also designing the building, let the thing go out to bid, and hopefully break ground late summer, early fall on that building. So that's stuff that could be going on right away. Next year, if we send this out to bid, we're not gonna have the whole summer in all probability. So chances are pretty good well, not only would we pay for another year's 4% uh, escalation but we would, uh, in construction costs, but we would also uh, have perhaps the, the problem of losing Ron's service for us. Um, one last little thing, and then we'll open this up to, to questions. I wanted to emphasize the need for a maintenance facility. For those of you who have been to see the present town highway garage, um, you know what I'm talking about. To those of you who have not been, I think you'd be pretty amazed. These people that we employ do not have a break room. They have a bathroom without a door. They don't have a 
anything other than a workbench to sit down and eat their lunch. They don't have lockers. It's, it's pretty rough going. And if we were employers of the usual sort, I think we'd want to treat our employees differently. And I think we'd get a benefit. We'd get better productivity. And I think this is really borne out in the question of the storage building. With the storage building, these employees would not have to climb up on trucks in the snow, maybe at midnight, and risk a fall in order that they get going to plow the roads for us. So, um, how do questions? you? I'll hand it over questions to you. For, well, why don't you stay there, Walter, just in case there are questions for you. Um, any questions for Walter? No? Well, right in the front, Walter. Right. <laughs> the maintenance building will have a bathroom. The storage building will not have a bathroom because it'll be, it'll be just a garage. They will use temporary facilities until the maintenance building gets built. Um, that's a good answer. Thanks, Kate. All right. Other, other questions for Walter? Right Come on, there. I'm getting off easy. No, not, not quite yet. Was there thought for solar uh, power on either building? Peter Martin, who's helped us out, he came to a meeting, who's in charge of the Energy Committee, um, seems to feel that we would be better served with ground mount solar collectors, partly for orientation, partly because of the um, possible hazard in a case of a disaster of having generating panels on top of emergency equipment. He feels that for the same money, we can put this on the ground because there's a lot of ground up there. We, and as I say, we could orient them differently. So yes, we thought about it. Uh, yes, it would be a good idea in all probability. No, it's not built into either of these buildings. Other questions? The questions generally, ready to vote? All, all, yeah. There's questions for Walter, and then there's also general statements. Can, are we allowed to make general statements? Sure. Okay. okay. Um, I was handing this out. Uh, I'm Mary McClintock. I live right down the hill on South Deerfield Road. I'm sorry I'm not healthy, and so I'm a little sh wobbly standing, um, and I'm tired. Um, so I'm just going to read this. Um, some people have had a chance to read it. Some haven't. Some have heard me speak. Conway has needed a new highway garage for decades. We've saved over a million dollars to replace our unsafe, inadequate highway garage that Walter just described. Spending $650,000 for a building to store highway equipment does not replace our existing highway garage. Instead, it uses $650,000 of our savings and leaves us with a mess of a highway garage and less savings to use to replace that garage. Let's talk about whether we want and can afford a storage building after we replace the highway garage. I'm really, really grateful for the hard work of the Highway Facility Com Committee. Walter and I have been talking about what it means to be friends and to really disagree about something. We've been learning a lot about each other. And I still strongly oppose the plan to start by building a storage facility, and I encourage you to vote no on Article 5. I also really strongly support the plan to design and prepare for a highway maintenance facility, which is voting yes on Article 6, and which is my understanding is, move, you know, we need to do something. Well, that's moving ahead with the highway maintenance facility. So thanks. OK, Peter? Um, I just wanted to respond to Mary, who is a, a great friend and someone who I respect immensely as an activist and for all that she does in the world. Um, a few other reasons for, for wanting the storage uh, building, in addition to 
keeping it under cover so that the employees don't have to struggle with the ice and the snow is that um, it will, we only have one place to put the storage garage and the maintenance facility, and that's relatively close to the school. Keeping heavy equipment outside is like inviting children to play on a jungle gym, and it doesn't seem to me to be very safe. Um, at Mary, you, in, in your activist way, you came to the uh, open forum that we had uh, a couple Saturdays ago, and you approached me with a question with who's responsible for the piece of equipment that's leaking oil near the well, the unused well. Um, and then I explained that we were going to build a, a, a garage, a storage facility, so that the equipment would be under cover on top of a, either a slab or a gravel floor, not allowing the oil to drip out onto the ground if there ever, ever was to be a, a, a hose break or something like that. So those are two other reasons why we feel as the garage committee very strongly, as strongly as Mary feels against it, we feel very strongly that it's a critical part of the maintenance facility. It can also use to be used for minor repairs or to push an, out a, a vehicle that's disabled while the maintenance facility is being used to repair a vehicle. If you're waiting for parts, you can store another vehicle in the maintenance facility. I see Ken Wimet's head here which, as we've said, used to be brown-haired and now gray-haired when he first started on this committee. Um, and he, he could test, he said, well, Ron, if you don't need any of those bays, we have a lot of other uses for storage in town. We could fill that up in a minute. So in addition to the highway equipment, we need storage, generally speaking, throughout the town. Sure. Other comments? Yes, sir. Right here. I'm Steve Thomas, Waitley Road. Um, I've been very impressed by the very pragmatic um, presentations by the people you just heard. But the point I want to make is uh, I've heard, and I'm a relatively newbie to the town, I've only been here, what, 16 years or whatever. Um, I've heard that there's a historic preservation um, enterprise that has something like uh, 900 kilobucks worth of money socked away, and I'm wondering, I'm, we're talking about transferring funds to facilitate, you know, having Article 5 and 6 be happening. Um, I'm wondering uh, what obstacles are in the way of transferring some of that historic preservation fund into what I consider to be a much more um, pragmatic and important uh, enterprise in these two buildings. I'm going to answer that question. You want to answer? So I think uh, you're referring to the Community Preservation Act monies. So uh, the, yeah, are, I guess it's the CPA. I, yeah, yeah. So, so, and a lot of those funds are statutorily limited. Say historic preservation is generally limited to historic preservation. Um, they, they, but there may be exceptions, but um, it requires it, it's a whole separate application. The, the CPC funds are limited to historic preservation, recreation, and open space. Are, the, are they welded okay. into and, place? And, and, and affordable plastic? housing, sorry, yeah. Uh, so uh, new, so new construction is, is right out. Okay. Except, unless Other it was comments? affordable housing. Make you put some uh, multi-use uh, units on, on top of the garage. Yes, sir, right there. I want to come down front so people don't have to turn around. Um, my name is Tom Pleasant, and last August when the town did not buy the Rose Farmhouse next door, I did. And I, I put a lot of money in, into that house, and um, I, I intend to put a lot more in, into it. Um, really happy to live there, or I, my kids live there, my, my kids and my grandkids. Um, I've, I've got to know Ron Sweet. He's become a really good neighbor of mine. I see him uh, on his own time on Sundays out there, trying to clean up that back lot, do extra work to, to get ahead of the game. I, I f have firsthand knowledge of what he has for equipment, what sits on the ground out there, what I, what I currently have stored in my sheep barn, which is, is um, we're gonna take back and uh, use for our own personal needs uh, come this July. Um, I can't, you know, I, I've, uh, I've come from a background where I managed to budget three times the size of Conway had 100 employees, both union and non-union, and also had 75 vehicles in the fleet. I know what it's, what it's like to have a storage issue. 
I'm, I strongly promote that we start with this storage building. I have not voted once for this town facility because I, I didn't like the way it was presented. I thought it was too much money. I own three houses in town. The tax impact on me would be, would be uh, tremendous. I've had to worry about that. But this particular plan, the way they've put, put it together, using the old, old plan, part of the old plan, and the new committee with their, their uh, redesign, having the town uh, start the site work, I think is an excellent way to go. I strongly recommend that we move down this path. Like I said, I got grandkids living next door. I got chickens out there. I'd like to see some of this stuff put away. I'd like to see the site cleaned up. I'd like to see some of the old metal equipment that's been stocked out in the woods from years past, see all that cleaned up. I think, you know, Mary's in a butter. I'm in a butter. I think for the town, it, get this equipment inside. It's better off. It's, it's safer for our employees. Uh, it'll, it'll the longe longevity on the equipment will last longer. I think it's a good bang for our buck. We've been putting money away for years now. I think it's a good start. I don't want to go against Mary because she's a good neighbor, a friend, and does a heck of a lot for a lot of people. But I, I think this is what we need to do for the town. So thank you very much. Okay. Good. Any other, any other comments? Maybe we should limit to these three. Okay. No, three people quickly. Go ahead. Start right out. Nelson Shifflett. I live on Shelburne Falls Road. So my understanding is this building will be roughly 7,500 square feet. Right. That's yes, correct. that's correct. Um, and so of the $650,000, could you estimate just approximately how much is going to go into design and other uh, expenses? $7,000 is going into design. 7000 So... Um, that means then that the building uh, is going to cost uh, considerably, well, less than $100 per square foot. Correct. Yeah, that seems like a very reasonable price. Do you, uh, does the committee have confidence in those numbers? We have good confidence in those numbers because we have been talking, Peter Jeswold has been talking to Dave Vreeland, who has agreed to do the design for us. He's a registered engineer. He, in turn, has, talking to, has talked to builders and we have, um, and I can show you if you're interested later, um, quite a write-up from one building contractor, Kurtz Construction in Westfield. And uh, they, uh, they have confirmed our numbers. So we feel pretty good about those numbers. The only part in those numbers that isn't really is nailed down as, as well as the rest is the concrete. We have built in there a number for concrete which could, uh, none, uh, well, all concrete. I'm going to differentiate between the foundation and the slab, Phyllis. The, um, the slab could possibly be a floating slab and be the foundation and slab all in one, in which case that price might go down. If, on the other hand, it looks like for not a whole lot more money, we can get a uh, concrete wall around the lower part of the building and a conventional foundation. We then would consider a separate slab. We would also consider, depending on money, no slab. But I think we want the slab almost for sure. So that's up in the air. It hasn't been decided. Other than that, though, we feel, and certainly we know, that we could build one or two of those versions for the price of 650000 Thank you. Thank you. For, that seems very okay. reasonable. All right. There were two more hands right over there. Are you still... Okay, one and then two, and then we're going to vote. Mike Herkelonis, or Roy Brook Road. Um, I don't agree with Mary on just about everything, but on this case, I do agree with her. That being said, um, if it was me, I'd build a maintenance facility first. But it doesn't matter to me, it, one way or the other, whichever way you want to build it first. I'm in favor of the article. Um, I do have a couple questions, though. Since this started somewhere around 2008, We've been hearing about the facility up there, that the, the firehouse, the highway garage, and how disarray it is, and the poor working conditions, and they haven't changed since. Two-part question, how much money have we put into there since 2008? Because we've been hearing about it, how bad it is since then. And then my second question is, is that when we build the highway storage facility, and then we go in a couple years from now, approve the maintenance building, what's our plan down the road? Because we're not going to keep 
brand new fire trucks and ambulances in a building that's falling down. So I, this whole time over the last few years, I've been waiting for a plan from the planning board or the select board to tell us as taxpayers what the long-term plan is with all the issues that we're going to be dealing with in town. I, I'm, that's my second question. <laughs> Anyone who I don't respond? think that's a question for me. Yeah, any response from the select board on that? Um, the, 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 we, you know, I, 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 I'm very aware of the, the need to plan. I, you know, I think you heard, you heard from the, the schools that they're doing 10 year building plans for their building. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the fire, the fire and a public safety, a public safety building has not been proposed. This, this, I, I, I would suggest to you that this, this committee as currently standing would be great to transfer over to that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, and, and that part, you know, part, part of this, when, when you really think about it, like w these projects take, th this is what it takes now for a small town like us to get anything done of this magnitude, that y you have to be smarter, you have to work harder, you have, you can't take anybody's answer for anything, you have to do your own work, and that's what they did day after day, these, these people have been working at this like full time for months, and it shows in this proposal. And, and, and so for me, it's about like, how can the town create processes that can lead to better results? And you're looking at it. This committee has done that. Um, the, pro the problem they, 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 and, is, and they, is... And they started with, with looking at what can be done to that building. They started not like, you know, I mean, I've been to most of their meetings. They started not looking at this new construction. They started looking, seri seriously looking, can they fix the old building? Can they, can they extend the cover over the, and they didn't take anybody's word for anything. They're, they ended up where they ended up just from hard work and thinking about all the alternatives. And thank God that they did all this because I'm totally incapable of coming to those types of judgments. Um, and, and, you know, as, as, as far as the, the uh, public safety building, it takes the fire and the police asking for it. It takes uh, a committee t putting it together. Um, and, and it takes volunteers such as yourself willing to roll up your sleeves and make it happen. And, uh, you know, the state does have the, if you look at what the state budgets did, um, I, I believe Adam Hines got money for Bernstein this year to build a public safety uh, complex out of, uh, paid for out of the state budget. So they're, they're, because for a whole lot, a lot of for, uh, reasons, the state can occasionally offer assistance in that. So I'd love to have a proposal that we could, you know, pass up the food chain and try to make something happen. Okay. Uh, can I just comment on that? Quick, quick comment, and then so I've got can one I more. Take, can I take it that no money has been put in that building for future, or to, to bring it up to any kind of code standards? Since 2008, nothing's been put done to that building. And to me, it sounds like there is no plan. I, I just can't understand. We have a planning board. We have a select board and capital improvements committee, and we have no plan. I'm not saying you have to have figures and numbers, but there should be a plan for the town to say this is what we're going down the road. Because if you start with a plan and just nilly-willy start putting up buildings here and buildings there, it's not going to work. And you can't convince me that that's the most uh, practical, feasible way to go about this. And I okay, am in favor last, of this article. Last comment, was it John Holy? Is that who wanted to make a comment? John Holy, uh, 49 Holy Road, Conway. I think it's a fantastic idea, one of the best I've heard in this town in a long damn time. <laughs> and with that, I call the question. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> We're not going to have to vote on that calling the question because I'm calling the question and don't have to vote when I do it. But I appreciate, John, your stepping up there and helping me out, <laughs> as you have several times over the years. Uh, all right, ready to vote. Now, this is a two-thirds vote, so we need our tellers again. And uh, even though Walter has a vested interest in this, a seal doesn't, so... Oh, you got a different teller. That's good. Okay. No, no one can accuse anyone. Those in favor of this, hold your yellow cards up high and long. And what's that? This is just this is just five. No, this is Article Five. Yes, for the notes.
Do I need to, uh, yeah, do I need to count? No. 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 Yes for the nose. Yes for the nose. But, uh, we're supposed to have the numbers, aren't we, Jenny? Yeah, Is that we're right? supposed to have yeah, the numbers. Yeah, you've got to have the numbers. Hold it. I can make the decision. I'm saying that it passes by two-thirds. Anybody want to go through the vote, even if you're opposed? We will. No. Okay. All right. It's a vote. Wow. Okay. Of course, Ginny doesn't care if she's right. She's, she's gone. <laughs> Thursday, she's done. It's the zoning bylaw that I have to have a vote. Oh, good. Okay. Article 6. We'll be done by 2 in the morning. Easily. <laughs> Easily. We'll be out of here by 2. Article 6. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Okay. Um, have we, in effect, covered the discussion of this, or do you want to keep on going? Anybody desperate to keep to talk? But no. Any, does anyone want to talk more about this? Are you ready to vote? Yeah. All those in favor, raise the cards up. The motion was, oh, you want to read the motion? Read the motion. Okay. I move that the town transfer $60,000 from the highway garage stabilization account to the general fund to design a highway maintenance facility and partially prepare the site, including obtaining a formal estimated construction cost and developing bid documents. Is there a, I heard the second. All those in favor, hold up your yellow cards. And now all those opposed, hold up, hold up your yellow cards. It carries. <laughs> two, two votes against. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Article uh, 7. truly is the vampire garage. I move that the town transfer $150,000 uh, to the capital stabilization account, 120 of that from the general stabilization account, and 30000 of that from free cash. Second? Second. Okay, discussion, Mr. Perkelonis? Just wondering how much we have in free cash this year. What is it, 464? Yeah, we, uh, we started this um, town meeting with uh, 438,000 plus dollars in free cash. And uh, just in case anybody wants to know, we have. Uh, 374,000 plus in general stabilization. Any other questions or comments on this article? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by two-thirds. Two two -thirds. Two -thirds. All those in favor, lift up your yellow cards. Let's see if we can agree on this one. And opposed? One, two. Okay, it's a vote. Okay. Article eight. I move that the town transfer $100,000 from free cash to the highway garage stabilization account. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, signify by holding your yellow cards up because this is also opposed. One opposed. Okay, it's a vote. Article 9. I move that the town transfer $55,710 from the capital stabilization account to the general fund for the purchase of six new self-contained breathing apparatuses. Is there a second? Discussion? That's, that's fire department. Other discussion? Questions? Comments? All those in favor? Signified by, let's see, this two is two-thirds. Two -thirds. So raise your yellow cards up. Imposed. Unanimous. Yeah. Article 10. I move that the town transfer $45,000 from free cash to the general fund for a new mini excavator. Is there a second? I heard a second. Discussion. Joe. Joe? Oh, you wait for the mic. Everyone could hear you. I guess the question I have is sort of general and refers to all these articles. I talked to Ron after the uh, pre-town meeting, and he led me to believe that his capital budget over 10 or 12 years 
is something like $180,000 a year that he would like to have. And this year it looks like we're appropriating close to 300. I, I think it'd be more appropriate to try to get closer to his goal, the 180. In other words, I think appropriating $300,000 for, for capital equipment and the highway garage is just too much on the table at one time. So I, and I don't know which articles Ron would prefer or if people want to even discuss that. Okay, other comments? Yes, sir. Ron. Uh, this piece of equipment is used almost every day, except for uh, sometimes during the, in the winter we don't use it. But it is a very valuable piece to the town in what we do. And right now we're a little over 2,000, about 2,200 hours on the machine. Last year at town meeting it was 1,600. So you can see how many hours we actually do use the machine. It is also a piece of equipment that has what they call a tier four motor, which is for the emissions. And when there's problems when as they age with the emissions, and we're just trying to stay ahead of the curve on it. And I've removed the other two because we can get along without replacing them right now, but it does go against my five-year plan that I have for the equipment and the small trucks, and I'm just trying to keep up so that we can keep working, and that's the reason for asking for it again. Okay, the other two he's referring to are Articles 15 and 16, which we are not going to take up tonight. Um, other comments? Yes, sir. That the I believe that the last time we discussed this, we were talking about uh, a machine that had approximately 1,500 hours on it. Is that correct? So uh, just out of curiosity, I talked to a gentleman who had done excavating work for me for about 25 years. And he has, a very, he has the same size machine, although a different make. And his opinion was that that machine was barely broken in. He said there's no way that he would even consider spending money to replace machine with that few hours on it. So my feeling is that if the machine is working fine at this point, we should replace it. Other comments? Mr. Fenton? Yeah, Gary. I, I can't make a motion, but it's really is to have... So Gary Fenton from Roaring Brick Road. To have five different highway items split throughout the warrant, it would be much more convenient and easier for us, or at least me, to understand and to, have, and to address them all at once with separate descriptions perhaps. But I make the recommendation to whomever makes up the warrant, the, the select board or whomever, but th these items should be together, not separated and random throughout the uh, warrant, please. Other comments? You ready to vote? Oh, Phyllis. I'm wondering if Ron can respond to Nelson's comment about that. About not the number being of hours? A lot of, a lot of hours on the mini -exit. Yeah, Ron? Oh, my friend told me. Well, there's a little difference between public and private. Um, public, we, we rely on the people's money to keep the machine running. We don't make money with it like private companies do. So it's kind of not really accurate what he was saying about um, that because of the few hours. Because every time we have a breakdown, we don't have, we haven't been making money with the machine to cover the cost of that. It comes out of my operating budget and it also puts down downtime for us that we have a very short time for doing summer work. Okay, ready, to, Mr. Kirkalonis. The Capital Improvement Committee, two of the people on that committee voted against this. So I'd like to hear from one or two of them. Does any, do any of them want to comment? You want, Russ? Did 
did vote for it. Um, there are some incentives to municipalities that are not available to private people, and those incentives usually ask to, to trade the uh, equipment with fairly low hours. Um, so therefore, that's the reason I voted for it. Okay, any other comments? Yes, Lee? More as a point of interest than anything, if all of the free cash votes passed, we would still have $126,000 plus change available as free cash to use later in the year. I added them all up and deducted them from the amount that we were certified this year. So it's not endangering that particular category at all. Unused free cash in, at the end of the year reverts to the general fund and closes out to usually free cash for next year. But uh, as I say, okay. just as a point of interest. Thank you. All right, ready to vote? Yeah. All those, this is a regular majority vote? Yep. All those in favor of Article 10 as proposed, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Ooh, that's close. Let's count it. All those in favor, raise your cards up, and could we, do we have some tellers again? Yeah, thank you. This will be a test of my hearing, but it sounded pretty close to me. All set? You guys in the agreement? We're all set. Who's this? Good, thank you. Three, four, Hold on zero, just a second. Three, 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 All those opposed, hold up your card. Is this a two-thirds vote? side over here on my left can put theirs down. Okay, 88 in favor and 65 against, so it passes, but it was close. Okay, all right. Article 11. 
to see if the town if the town will transfer twenty two thousand six hundred sixty four dollars from the ambulance department receipts reserve account to the fiscal year two thousand twenty operating budget of the ambulance department is there a second second discussion ready to vote all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 12. I move that the town transfer $22,000 from free cash to the general fund to replace a compactor at the transfer station. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. <laughs> Discussion? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by two saying thirds, aye. Right? Aye. Oh, this is two, no, wait, uh, no. Opposed? Okay, two thirds of it, it passes. Okay, article 13. I move that the town transfer $20,000 from free cash to the other post-employment benefits fund. Is there a second? Discussion? What is the other post-employment benefits fund? OPEB. OPEB. Tom. Oh, you didn't have a vote earlier for me to speak. We didn't? No. Shall we vote to allow the town administrator yeah. to speak? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You, do we have to do a, a yellow know. cards on this one? No. 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 OK. Go ahead. Other post-employment benefits refers to health care because we um, pay a uh, portion of retirees' health insurance, uh, this costs the town, oh, and, and it, as opposed to the pension. The pension is the main post-employment benefit. The other post-employment benefit is the health care, and we have to pay a certain proportion of that. And this is counted against us when we have an audit. If we, if we don't put money into this, it counts against us in our credit rating when we go out for bonding if we don't put more money into it. So this is something that will probably come up every year uh, forever because even though it only costs half of a percent of our operating budget, unlike towns like Worcester, which are $300 million in debt, uh, the credit rating agencies don't recognize that it's really not an issue for a town like Conway. So we do have to put something in it. This will bring us up to the level of about two years worth of funding in our other post-employment benefits fund. Okay, any other discussion? Ready to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 14. I move that the town transfer $20,000 for free cash to the general fund for a new grant match account. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Explanation. Occasionally, the town gets the opportunity to apply for grants in the middle of the year rather than call a special town meeting to approve the required matching funds from the town this would cover most of the smaller grants that we might find occasion to apply for that required matching funds. Further discussion? Yes, right here, ma'am. Your name and here it comes. Hope Coleus, uh, Main Poland Road. Uh, so why do you need $20,000 to apply for grants? This would be to fund the town portion. Usually grants are not 100%. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, disability grants are 60% of the cost of a project. The town has to pay 40% of the cost of that project. So again, for, for smaller grants, uh, you know, 20% 20, 20 um, would be 40% of a $50,000 grant. So the, the whole amount would be used for something that got the town uh, $30,000, we would still have to chip in 20000 So that's, that's a typical ratio that we'd be expected to fund. Okay, any other discussion? 
Mr. Bosman? It's coming right at you from the other side. There it is. Um, one of the reasons uh, I was happy when we brought the town, town administrator on board a few years ago was because it was my understanding that he was going to get busy writing grants and help pay for his salary. Um, I don't think, last we talked, Tom, you hadn't had the time or the grants weren't available. This appears that the, the, the environment is changing, is it? Is there, have you, have you, are you seeing some opportunities where we could benefit from yes. a grant? Yes, and we have gotten grants, including uh, a uh, disability grant to make the bathroom on the first floor of the town hall accessible. So I, I do keep my eyes out. We're also applying for larger grants that this would not cover. Uh, we, every year we apply for an emergency management grant and, and get it. So, so yeah, there has been activity in that realm. Other comments or questions? Chief? Uh, this would not roll over to free cash. The, the, uh, the, the article is to create a new account. So this would be a, uh, a separate account in the general fund that would remain there until expended. Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carries. <laughs> All right. You want to do our formal passing over here? Uh, sure. Article I, I move to pass over Article 15. Second. Second. OK. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? OK. Article 16. I move to pass over Article 16. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? OK. Article 17, we're halfway there. <clears throat> I move that the town transfer $15,000 from free cash to the general fund for the design of a lift for the town hall. Second. Second. Discussion. I Aren't there any designs already is a question. I, yeah. I'd like to present that. You want um, to present? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, this is the only other building project that uh, <laughs> has uh, reached this point to answer Mike's question. This would be the beginning of uh, a renovation of the town hall. It would make the second floor accessible ultimately. So to get a lift, you have to have the design for the lift. and this would uh, provide funds for the design of that lift. Then we would know how much the lift cost. Um, and again, um, the uh, Mass Office on Disability does have grants for this. So I imagine we could get this done as a preliminary project, uh, using, ultimately using uh, some substantial grant funds. That would bring down the cost of any future renovation of the town hall and would make the second floor immediately accessible. Other comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Rose, uh, Wade the Road. Uh, with this proposed lift, uh, what are we talking about here? A wheelchair lift, uh, an elevator, what are we talking? There's maintenance, there's all kinds of things to consider with either. Yes, there would be operating expenses associated with it, including maintenance. Uh, this would be something that would be functional to bring people up and down from the second floor. It would not be huge. It would not be an elevator, which costs substantially more money, but uh, a one-story lift. And uh, it would have to lift about 12 feet, and lifts go up about 15. So we're within the realm of a lift. Yes, but we're also uh, responsible for annual testing, uh, uh, architectural uh, access to it. Sure. There's a lot more that goes into a lift. Uh, that's, of course, part of the design. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with your design. We know we need one, we need something, but the whole building is not handicap accessible. So you'd have to modify the whole building. Let's scrap the whole building. <clears throat> other, other comments? Mr. Recor. Oh. Hi, I'm Jim Recor from uh, Maine Poland Road. The only reason I could see to get a lift in the present town hall to go to the second floor so 
it would be able to bring people up to the second floor to see the junk that we're storing up there. I somehow don't understand the validity of that because the upstairs used to be a basketball complex and a, a place people used in town. Now, as far as I know, unless I'm very wrong, it's just storage for old stuff. Why would we need a lift to do that? And in saying that, I got to back Chris Rose up. We need a modern facility for a town hall, just as we need for so many things in this town that we refuse to bring into this modern world that we have. Everything we have is old and rebuilt and redesigned. And it's sad that our tax rate is as high as it is and we have nothing modern except the school we're sitting in right now. Thanks. Other comments? Mr. Baker? To my knowledge, I don't think the town and county has ever taken a vote as to what we want to do with the upstairs in that gymnasium. I think we ought to consider that first before we talk about what we're going to do. Okay. Right here. Tom? Tom McCarthy, uh, Matthews Road. And every October, um, I am forced to dress up in a ridiculous costume <laughs> and participate in the haunted house on um, Baptist Hill because I can't get into the second floor and watch the judgment of the uh, rag shag parade costumes. I'd much rather be there. And if it's a matter of taking the junk out of the second floor and moving it to the new storage facility we're going to have over here, <laughs> I think that would be actually a good thing to do. And we're not going to get a new town hall very soon. I don't see this group of people uh, voting to get a new town hall in the near future. And so that is a public space, and we're required by law to make that accessible. And so I hope folks will uh, support me in getting up to the rag shag parade. <laughs> Thanks. Other comments? Uh, Okay, Kenny. Yeah, we just recently spent a lot, of, a lot of money to renovate that town hall to make it energy efficient. I see nothing wrong with that building structurally. And I think it's a total waste to even consider tearing it down and relocating. Let's use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Peter, you are? Uh, the question was, do we have a design proposal or will these funds be used to get a design proposal? These funds would be used to get a design proposal, which would also give us the cost of a, an estimated cost for the project itself. Okay, right there in the stripe. Hi, Giselle Italian, Academy Hill Road. I support this because um, as a member of the Cultural Council, we, when we think about events and where we want to do things, there really aren't a lot of spaces in Conway, and we're not going to have a new town hall in a long time, and I think we need to make that accessible because we've considered events that we want to do up there, and the reason maybe it's used for storage is it's, we can't put events up there because it's not accessible, so I support that. Okay, over here, Mr. Baker. Yeah, no, right there, You're right where you are. Doug Baker, 116. Uh, years ago, I was on the finance. Is that on? Is his mic on? Hold it to your mouth. Yes. Oh, Can you hear me now? Go ahead. <laughs> years ago, we talked about the use of that building, and it never got anywhere. Of course, back, back, <laughs> back. Yeah. Well, they can't hear you. you. They can't hear you. I can hear myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back years ago, they talked about using that building for different things, and like I say, it never got anywhere. But that same question was brought up years ago about access to the second floor for handicapped people. And here's a gentleman right here that could really use it, and I'm agreed to that. But I think there's other options we ought to be looking at, and I always thought years ago, with the, with the parking area we have by the ball field, we've got a great access to the second floor of that building with a wonderful overhead ramp, closed-in ramp. Could be Conway's second uh, 
second of, uh, what am I thinking about? It could be a nice, you go to some of these colleges, they got these ramps all over the place, from one building to another. And they're all um, enclosed ramps right out of the parking lot. He could park his van, get out, and go right into the building from that second uh, parking lot. And it costs us a lot less money. Okay. And it's something we should look at. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm going to get someone that hasn't spoken yet. Ma'am, right there. Mary Parker, Waitley Road. Uh, I think the point that Chris was trying to bring up, and he didn't, um, when you go to put a lift or an elevator in a building, you contact elevator companies. They come in free of charge to give you a design and an estimate for what that would cost. So what we're not understanding is why you're hiring or planning to hire an outside concern and pay them that amount of money when an elevator company will do it for free. You want to comment on that? Yeah. yeah. I'm Liv Wyatt. I've worked on a lot of elevators. I have never had an elevator company volunteer to do a design. They, well, I can tell you, Bay State Elevator won't, Schindler won't, Otis won't, um, the Garaventa makes lifts doesn't do it. For, it won't do it for me. So <laughs> I don't know how they, why they do it for the town of Conway. In fact, we have to certify all sorts of things that they refuse to take responsibility for. So I think um, this is good money. I agree with Tom. It's it's really a disgrace that we don't have an accessible facility in town. Um, the other thing I want to say is we just put a walkway at Smith College at their, uh, what used to be their boathouse. Uh, it cost more than an elevator for an outside walkway to go from one floor to another. So I don't think you'd save any money putting in a ramp because it's going to be a very long ramp. Bob Baker. One last comment, folks. We heard some people talk about wanting to use the facility upstairs in the gym, or in the gymnasium for whether it be rag shack parades or whatever else. And there's another contingent in this town that wants to move all the town offices up there so there'll be no area for anybody to use other than office space. That's why I'm suggesting the select board take a, on a, present an article in the future asking what we want to do with the upstairs. I think the lift is a great idea, whether you use it for office space or a general use area. We do need a lift, but we need to know what we're going to do upstairs with this area of space. Okay, you ready to vote? Okay. But, yeah, Lorraine? Uh, I'd like to see a lot of spent on redoing the kitchen in that town hall. It is awful to use. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Kirkalonis, last comment. Here we go. Um, there was a plan on refurbishing the upstairs of that town hall back in 2008, 2009. I was on the planning board. And at that time, it was around when Ken was talking about the reinsulation. I think they'd put a new furnace in there, Ken. Am I correct? And um, I don't remember who the selectmen were at the time, but we did receive a grant to put an elevator in there. There was a grant. And it was, it was time bounded, and we didn't put, get our information in time, not we, but the selectmen did it at the time. We lost out on that grant. We, okay. What I'm, I just say more about that is the building's not going anywhere. We're not going to rip it down. We're going to use it. So we can't use it now because it's not handicap accessible. So I think in the interest of moving forward, I think this article should be approved. Ready to vote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a straight, straight up vote, right? Yeah, straight up vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Passes. Yes, Article 18. I move that the town transfer $12,000 from free cash to the general fund for a new account to pay expenses for audits of the town finances, Conway Grammar School finances, and any other audit. Is there a second? Discussion? I have a presentation. On presentation, Mr. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, in Article 2, 
There was only a dollar put into uh, the town audit. That's because we don't actually need to do a town audit in fiscal year 20. But we do need to do one at least every other year, and we need to do a small one at the school every three years. So the idea behind this is that if we put $12,000 a year into a fund, we can pay for all of that uh, without having this every other year uh, we pay a lot of money and the other year we don't pay any. So this is an attempt to even out the, uh, the impact of having these audits done. Uh, that's, that's the intent of this. So every other year we'd pay out of it, but the, uh, the level of funding uh, stays the same and uh, that should be easier on people knowing what to expect. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Yes, way in the back. Why is this not part of the budget? Oh, because we don't need it next year. We wouldn't spend it and it would just roll over to free cash and we wouldn't have that money anymore. So if we put it into an account, uh, it stays in that account year. It after stays year. there, and then we put in another twelve thousand next year, same amount, and we have the full amount available to pay for all the audits. Other questions or comments? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Article nineteen. I move that the town amend Article thirteen of the May two thousand and fourteen. A 2018 annual town meeting by transferring from free cash to the general fund an additional $6,000 for the replacement of the 2012 Kubota tractor. Is there a second? Second. All those uh, discussion? Ready to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I, I think that fails. I, th I think it passed. You think it passed? We're going to vote. Passed. All right. Tellers? All those in favor, hold your uh, yellow cards up. If you're in favor, you're holding your cards up, right? Okay, those who were in favor were 64 and those against were 44. So my, my ears failed me, but the chairman of the board of select was right. Okay, passes. Article 20. 
I move that the town transfer $5,000 from the assessor's overlay surplus account to the general fund for the next recertification of town property values. Is there a second? Discussion? Mr. Kirkalonis? have this every single year. Why isn't it in the regular budget? Which one is it? Yeah. Their response? Yeah, Natalie has it. Oh, go ahead. event that now happens every five years. So we have to accumulate funds to pay for it. And by having it in the article, the money carries over from one year to the next. Our expenses include our time, also hiring outside appraisers to do the hydroelectric plant, the two upcoming uh, large solar arrays, and should we have a couple of new communications towers come into town, Excuse me, there are, parent, there are currently leases out there, although they may not be fulfilled and acted upon. We would have to have those especially appraised as well. So we need to have twenty-five or $30,000 available. And it's easier to do it, again, by get, putting away 5000 a year. Okay, any other comments? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Article 21. I move that the town transfer $5,000 from the assessor's overlay surplus account to the general fund for the conversion of the assessor's computer software system. 4,200 of that to the assessor's fiscal year 2020 salary and wages line and $800 of that to the assessor's fiscal year 2020 operating expenses. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. Article 22. I move that the town transfer $2,576 from free cash to the general fund for library expenses. Is there a second? second. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Unanimous. Article 23. I move that the town authorize the treasurer to spend $15,000 from the Medicare revolving fund. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? What's it, what, it's for Medicare. Yeah, <laughs> Medicare. Health yeah. expense, health care expense. Our treasurer has it. Jan? Fees that were involved for failing, failing for filing for Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement for the school. Can you hear me now? There you Never. go. Okay. So yes. Yeah. So the fees. Go ahead. You said it right. I said it. Any any questions for Jan? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Article 24. I move that the town appropriate, appropriate or to reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund as recommended by the Community Preservation Committee as set forth herein, the following amounts of the Community Preservation Purposes with each item considered a separate appropriation. A, to appropriate $4,332.93 from fiscal year 2018 annual revenues for administration of the Community Preservation Committee. Okay, we'll take that motion up first. Or that part of the motion is a second. Okay, discussion. Janet? I'm not, I'm not cur currently on this committee, uh, but I was for a long time, and this is supposed to be for FY, for the coming budget year, for FY 20. And yeah. it seems to me this has just been repeated yeah. and the same numbers from a couple of years ago. Uh, I think this committee, like some others, have, have, uh, don't have adequate membership or are inactive. And so 
As I recall, and Joe Strugowski, maybe you can help me out, when this was first passed, before the commit, when the act was first passed, the, the, this is required by the statute that you take your estimated revenues for the coming year, which the, our, our paid officials can easily do, and then set aside, it's up to a maximum of 5% of that for administration, which is usually never spent and goes back in. And then it's 10% for each of those other reserves that are listed below. So that is my amendment, to change this to read FY20 and uh, just use those percentages. Okay. Do you have any comments on that, those, that proposed amendment? You agree? I agree. Okay, any, and is there a second on the amendment? Second. Okay. Yes. Discussion. The figures are appropriated from the FY19 revenues, not the 18 and not the 20. Not the 20. It's for the. No, it's 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 for the fiscal year that will will be ending very soon because that's where we know what what we have. No, no. It's a projection of the following year, just as our budget, just as the general fund budget is projected for the following fiscal year. So the same applies to these revenues. Well, these figures, as it happens, reflect the fiscal 2019 revenues, what was billed out as part of our tax bills, and less any abatements and exemptions. So we always estimated the revenues based on what your, your estimates were basically for the collection and what the tax rate is. How about if, if we say the amendment is altered to say FY19 or FY20, whichever is legally required? I would sure. recommend 19 and quite frankly, we did our best in the absence of a community presentation. Oh, uh, so are, Lee, are you saying that you actually did these figures? I participated in it, yes, because the assessor's office has the figures for how much was billed out and how much was abated or exempted. We're the only place that has those figures. So you're saying it, it's correct with current yes. numbers for FY19? Yes. OK, you're going to amend to FY19? Is that what you want the amendment to be? No. no. My, my, my amendment is still for FY20, FY. because I think that's what's required for the subsequent year. OK. Well, maybe so there should you we pass this until we, but it has to be has to be voted. Mm -hmm. Well, this would be lower, so it would be safe to do. Mm. There's an amendment pending. So the amendment is for, for 20, FY20, and you also amended to be percentages rather than these fixed dollar amounts. OK, ready to vote on the amendment? No? Dana? Dana Goodfield, uh, Bardwell Ferry Road. Could somebody from the CPA committee tell us how much money is in that fund and how much was spent in the past year? Do we know that? Yes, way in the back. As the guilty party for all of this, uh, the committee is dormant. I'm on the committee, so um, that's why it's doing this. The fiscal year question is because I got it wrong a number of times, so Lee is doing it better than I'm doing it. These are percentages, so I am following the law. Um, the numbers, I'm not exactly sure because we're dormant. When we have something to do, we'll do it again. So is it safe to say there wasn't anything spent? Nothing was spent, nothing well, was done, because no one asked us to do it, so we can't do it. Right. When there's a project, we will do it. Otherwise, we don't waste your probably time. probably something north of $400,000 in that account. And it's pretty amazing that there's no committee and nobody seems to know what's going on. It's a great way to spend our tax dollars. We do know exactly how much it is. Tom has that. Lee has that. How much is in the account? Do we know? Mm -hmm. Well, they're asking. They're asking how much is in it. So we can either say, go look in the town report, or we can give them the number. Yeah, I have. Um... Yeah, 
I, yeah, I have. The current total um, in the Community Preservation Fund as a whole, which does not break it down into these different, uh, different subject areas, is $1,408,764. One million four hundred eight thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars and twenty two cents. Okay. Any other comments before we vote on the amendment? Okay. Yes, sir. Maynard Stowe on uh, South Deerfield Road. And I just have a question. If we've got a, over a million dollars in that fund, what happens if we vote no on the whole thing? <laughs> Is there an answer to that? What happened? That guy back there. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. The law states we're taxing ourselves this money. The money goes into the account. We can spend the money when you, town meeting, vote to spend the money on a project. If someone has a project, our committee may do something and help you spend your money. Otherwise, it accumulates until you choose to spend your money. Okay. Other comments? Janet, you want to? Uh, some people may may not have been here uh, long enough or may have forgotten, but with that money in the past, we have preserved very f valuable farmland, uh, provided a million dollars for the uh, ball field restoration, uh, improved our historic assets, and we're hoping in the future uh, to provide some kind of affordable housing, all of those projects for future uh, preservation of those assets in Conway to benefit all of us are very, are very expensive. Okay, other um, comments? So, and there uh, are two proposed the, projects, but they're not legally why they're here. here yet, so we can't act on them. Okay, let's vote on the amendment to make it 2020, which may or may not be right. We don't know. You think it's 2019. Yeah, Ginny. Last year's warrant said 2018. Last year said 18, so this year presumably should 19. say 19. Yeah. If last year's was right, and it seemed to have worked, the state didn't object, or no one objected. So we're voting on 2020 because that's the amendment that's in front of us, and we're voting on making it percentages rather than these fixed amounts, because these fixed amounts were based on percentages for 19, so we don't have fixed amounts for 20. All those in favor of the amendment as proposed, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Does someone want to make an amendment to make it 2019? No? So moved. So moved. Second? Gary? an amendment to just say that the amount that's statutorily required will be put into reserves. We don't know what it, we know there are fixed percentages. You've just told us that it's statutorily required. So Is that right? There's statutorily required percentages? Yes. The amendment has been made to make it the statutorily required percentage will be, will be put in. Is there a second? That's Jim Recor, not Mr. Recor, seconding it. Okay. Discussion. Uh, yes, sir, in the way back. Well, there has to be a there has to be a vote. If we voted it down, we wouldn't. They have to vote it. We didn't vote on 19 yet. We didn't vote on 19. Okay. What do you mean we didn't? Is that on, Joe? Hold it close to your mouth. Fifteen years ago when I worked on this with Janet, you, you're required by law to put 10% uh, in each of the three accounts that Tom mentioned. You have to decide what to do with the other 70% or whatever the residual is. So that's the, that's the reason for voting. I have the accountant's balance sheet from 331 this year. And he says we have $983,000 in change. OK. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I think if you want to make it the statutory amount, that deals with the 
The other 70% will have to go into some other fund to be determined. Okay. Not to make it complicated. Yep. Go ahead, Justin. So by law, we have to reserve 10% for each of the reserved funds. The rest of it we don't reserve to give the town as much flexibility as we can. That's all we're trying. And that's, that's, the 50, that's all we've ever done. We just 50, do that with whatever numbers there are. So we are trying to follow the statutory law, providing the town as much flexibility as we can. So if Gary can help us figure out how to say that once and we never have to vote on this again, I would be very pleased. All right, we have an amendment, and that is to, to uh, fund this in accordance with the statutory provisions, but that only covers 30% and doesn't do anything for the 70%. So, all those in favor, signify by saying aye, aye. to the amendment. Opposed? Yay. Okay, so now, is there someone that wants to propose an amendment that we do, that we say 2019, and the actual dollar amounts that are in there? So Which I is move. to say just 2019, that's the only thing. I move. Second? Second. Discussion? Just on the amendment now, all those in favor of 2019 being replaced, replacing 2018, signify aye. by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Now, we vote. Okay, as amended. Any, any more discussion? We are voting on whether to appropriate $4,322 from fiscal year 2019 and reserves to the Community Preservation Committee, A, and we're going to very quickly make the same change to 2019 on B, but we're not voting on B yet. Just A, right? That's how you That's right. yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, right. B. To provide reserves from fiscal year 2019 annual reserves, uh, $8,665.87 to the Community Preservation Historical Resources Reserve, $8,665.87 to the Community Preservation Community Housing Reserve, $8,665.87 to the Community Preservation Open Space Reserve and $56,328.16 to the Community Preservation Budgeted Reserve. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Article 25. I move that the town adopt a general, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Sections 53G, for obtaining funds from applicants for the hiring of consultants, and Chapter 44, Section 53G, one half, for the deposit of payments of cash, bonds, negotiable securities, sureties, and other financial guarantees to secure the performance of any obligation by an applicant as a condition of a license, permit, or other approval or authorization for the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, Board of Selectmen, et cetera. Okay, do we need uh, assistance here? Okay. Okay. All right. Motion's been made. Second? What else said over there? I can't see. Okay. All right. Uh, does someone want an explanation? Or are you ready to vote? Vote. No one wants an explanation? Joe. Joe. You want an explanation or are you going to give an explanation? But, but nobody wants it, Joe. <laughs> Chief Wilmet would like an explanation. Could you stand up, turn around, and give him that explanation? Here he is, right here. This no, it's right here. The mic. It's right where I'm pointing here. Yeah, Mr. Strugowski is going to give the explanation. Chief Wimet. and everyone um, else. It's actually two separate sections. The first one is the Planning Board, ZBA, CONCOM, 
are allowed to hire consultants to help them make decisions. Uh, we recently did it for the uh, solar system. It's also in our bylaw for cell towers, where the, the town does not have the expertise. So we go out and hire a consultant, but the applicant has to pay for it. So we get a contract with a consultant. We have John Roberg sign it as, as the town official, and then the applicant pay, refunds the pays the money to us so we can hire them. So they pay for their own consultant. That's the first article. The second one is, in our zoning bylaws, we have decommissioning costs for solar systems and cell towers, probably other places I can't remember. And the second one deals with what we do with the money that we get from the applicant, because we have to keep the money for 20 years in the case of a solar system. So he's gonna give us money to make sure that we can decommission the solar system should he default. So there needs to be a, a procedure for keeping the money and keeping track of the interest and all those kinds of things. There's no money involved. Just for the well, there's lots of money, but this just tells you how to deal with the money. Okay, good explanation. Any more questions for anyone or comments? Ready to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Article 26. I move that the town amend its vote on Article 4 of the September 24, 2018 Special Town Meeting to set its short-term rentals tax at 6% as printed in the warrant. Okay, so the change here is, is there a second? Yeah. Is that it said not exceeding 6% before, right? And now you want to set it at 6%. Any discussion? Yes, way in the back. Brendan O'Connell, Reeds Bridge Road. What's the current tax rate and how much revenue has been generated since this bylaw has been put in force? Zero. Zero. Okay. <laughs> how is this enforced? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the Board of Health tech, I, I, the Board of Health would have statutory enforcement rights. I, uh, so this this was something I was really keen on back in September when it looked like the law when it was going to be written would help our town raise revenue and that the revenue was most likely to be paid from people outside of this town, which is a spectacular opportunity for our town to get people from outside of the town to give us money. Um, but the way it actually came out when the ink was dry and the governor signed it, it's not going to help us all that much. It's not going to hurt us, but... Um, I'm not as in love with it as I was. Uh. All right, any other questions? Ready to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That passes. We were opposed to this. Article 27. I move that the town amend its general bylaws under section nine as printed in the warrant. Second. Okay, sure. Here comes the mic. Wait for the mic, please. I'm Dave Barton, Upper Baptist Hill Road, and I'm chair of the Personnel Committee. <coughs> it's one of those nearly hidden committees in the town. There are only three uh, official people on it who are appointed to it. And at this time, we're absent one, so we're down to two. And the two of us constitute the personnel committee at the moment. And the other person is Sue Fenton, who is just retired as a lawyer. Okay. Hold it like an ice cream cone. Right yes. There. Can I hear now? Okay. Uh, I'm chair of the personnel committee. And as I say, it's one of the hidden committees in town, though it has a very important function. And its basic function is to uh, serve the town administrator and the select board in matters of personnel policy where you're talking about the salaried employees part-time and full-time. Uh, this is a fair number of people in, in our town administration. And the work has been, uh, in the past year, if you look at the annual report, you'll see that what was written was we've revised the handbook in which the obligations of the town to its salaried employees and the obligations of those employees to the town were updated. 
And this, this took quite a bit of doing. It took four drafts over the course of a year to get the update complete because laws have changed. And this is really the basis for the handbook is that most of these obligations are determined by federal law or uh, state law. At the, fortunately, having Sue Fenton aboard, who was part of the original committee before there was ever a town administrator, uh, Sue was an expert on employment law. And so having her aboard and focusing attention of not only Tom and Lisa on the new handbook as it should come about meant literally, as I say, four drafts. It, we completed it and gave it to the selectmen for their approval on December 26th, the day after Christmas. It was a great <coughs> gift, um, and they approved it. So in effect, there is a new handbook that certifies all these uh, requirements, obligations are on the town's part as well as on the employee's part, and it's updated. But as Sue says, the laws are changing rapidly. So rather than there being five years since the handbook wasn't updated, we're expecting on the personnel committee that it be updated every year. Um, what you see here is a change in the bylaws updating the committee itself. So having updated the handbook serving others, we're updating the, the uh, bylaws that define the committee. And the major change, an important one, is that when the committee was originally established, there was no town administrator. Now we have a town administrator and an assistant, and these two join us in our meetings. Uh, while they do not vote, in essence, Tom sets the agenda for the meetings. Lisa takes the minutes. Uh, Lisa is a former lawyer herself, so that in writing up minutes for complicated matters, she's an excellent uh, recorder. Tom has the responsibility for a staff of employees who are salaried, part-time and full-time. And so Tom's concern has been uh, to watch over these and make certain that the questions of employment are uh, up to date. He has to report to the selectmen, and the selectmen are interested, of course, in all these questions. So we sit these days with Tom, who himself then sits between us and the select board. The change in bylaws simply reflect this, that to update the committee is really to bring it up to date with the handbook, literally. Uh, so I vote to vote as it's tough read if you take a look at the changes and remember that what is underlined is removed and what is uh, overlaid is stays. Any questions? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I, I need a clarification. I'm Grant Ingle. I live on Waitley Road. And I'm looking particularly at number two, at everything that's struck there. And my question is, do these responsibilities move from the, the personnel committee to the town administrator formally? So, let me say why. These are very important things to do, to, have sal to uh, update salary ranges, uh, to have a uniform system of performance evaluations and salary levels. Um, to have procedures booklets, um, to recommend, re review and recommend employee training and professional development. These are, I work with organizations, these are things that they often need to do. Are, are these things still going to be done somehow by someone? Yes, many of those things have been done. Um, it's a question, uh, at one of the things that, one of the roles that I have is human resources director. So I am responsible through my contract for doing a number of these things. And what I look to the personnel committee for is policy advice, um, technical advice, um, any kind of input that I need to help me make those decisions. And, and I think David would agree that we work very closely together in, make, in, in working with all those things. So 
the, the idea there is that since the authority has shifted, in fact, to the Director of Human Resources, then uh, it's no longer the Personnel Committee's job to get involved at that level of work. Thanks for a great answer, Tom. Okay, any other comments? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's a vote, unanimous. Article 28. I move that the town accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, Section 20, as amended, establishing an other post-employment benefits trust fund and designates the treasurer, town administrator, and representative of the Board of Selectmen, custodians of the fund, as its trustees. Is there a second? Second. Does anyone remember what the other post-employment benefits trust <laughs> is from earlier in the discussion? But any comments? Questions? Yes, way in the back. I think that was voted for an account. Is that right? Yeah, what's the difference now, between the and account that we And now they're creating a trust in. fund. Yeah. Okay. No. No? It, it, we're designating trustees. Designating trustees yeah. for us. Because the, the OPEB is an investment, uh, among other things. Um, it, it, it's a sum of money that the town has to have custody over. And it's, it's an investment vehicle, if you will, or a, an amount to put into an investment vehicle. And that's what this would set up as a committee that would be in charge of that. To oversee that? To oversee trustees. the okay. yeah, trustees to oversee that. Um, and, and I'm currently in the one that for the Frontier School Committee, they have an OPEB, the, the same thing, and every year you decide which bank it's going into, which, uh, you okay. know, it's So in light of Mr. Fenton's earlier comment about order of articles, this might have been right next yeah. to it. it yeah, yeah. Helpful. Okay, any other comments or questions? Ready to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Yeah. Article 29. I move that the town authorize the select board to enter into a 10-year contract with the option of a five-year extension commencing on July 1, 2020 with a qualified vendor selected by Mass DEP through a competitive bid process for recycling processing services for the town subject to the select board's determination that the contract is in the best interest of the town and subject to town meeting approval in the spring of 2020 for funding of the, for these services. Is there a second? Discussion? Ready? Yes. Oh, we currently have a, a long-term contract, and this is the contract that is uh, up with the Springfield Materials Recovery Facility, and it is set to expire on June 30th of 2020, so in a year. So they have a bid process underway, and um, we now do have a 10-year contract. This is for another 10-year contract. Um, these do tend to be long-term. The difference with this one is that it also has an option for a five-year extension, so it could conceivably be a five-year contract. Uh, the market for recyclables is really bad now, but it's probably going to get worse. So if we enter into a contract now, that would be great. If we do not enter into this contract now, we will not be able to um, get into it in the future. So we've been advised by the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District to have this article on the warrant and to pass it. Um, and uh, that's their recommendation and they've been managing our, our, uh, th those arrangements for us for a long time. Any other discussion? Ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? One, one opposition noted. Passed. Article 30. I move that the town adopt the resolution as printed in Article 30 of the warrant. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? 
No discussion on it on this? Yes. Okay. Right there. Microphone's right there. Good evening. My name is Bill Como. I live on Bardwell's Ferry Road. I'm here to talk in favor of a resolution in the State House calling for the creation of a commission to recommend changes to the state flag and seal of Massachusetts. This resolution has 35 sponsors in the State House, including Senator Adam Hines and Joe Comerford and Representative Natalie Blay. As we approach the 400th anniversary of the Puritan's Landing in 1620, I believe it is time that we do this. I've spoken to quite a few people around here in the last few weeks and learned that many had not paid much attention to the state's flag. I'll admit that I hadn't either until recently when I heard about this resolution. At first glance, it might seem to many of us that the flag and seal, which had been in use with uh, few changes since 1898, are honoring its first inhabitants because of a native, ma native man's prominent placement at their center. That, in fact, was how I viewed it. However, when looking more closely, I began to see it differently. There is the arm of a soldier raised to strike over the head of a native man whose bow and arrow are downturned. Even if not intended this way, it is the image of a vanquished people submitting to the colonial authority under the threat of violence and death, and it is a lingering reminder of a painful history. We should remember that few of the original Massachusetts tribe from which our state takes its name survived colonial rule. Many succumbed to plague and others to violence. Land was systematically taken from them. Thousands of Christianized natives known as praying Indians were removed to an internment camp at Deer Island and Boston Harbor where exposure to harsh winter elements left hundreds dead. Many of their survivors were sent as indentured laborers to the West Indies or sold into outright slavery. In 1689, a bounty was put in, on the scalps of native men, and in 1877, that bounty had more than doubled to 100 pounds sterling. Many of these scalps ended up in museums, including the Peabody, until federal law many years later made it illegal for them to be there. Natives were not given authority to make decisions regarding the sale or cultivation of their land and were deemed wards of the state. Forced removal, some with sword, some with pen, left communities without homes, without food, without livelihood, and further robbed of their culture and dignity. So while the depiction of a Native American man on the flag and seal of the state might have escaped our notice, it's time we notice it and think about how it is perceived in the eyes of Native Americans. All of us deserve a flag that we can be proud of, that reflects who we are, that reflects the best about our state, and is devoid of even unintended bias. To our Native American friends and neighbors, whose ancestors helped Puritan settlers survive harsh early winters, from whose name our state takes its name, and whose stewardship of the land for a century ended in so much loss, let us hear their petition and create a culturally diverse commission to recommend changes to the flag and seal that will honor all citizens. Please join the towns of Gill, Orange, Irving, Greenfield, Asheville, Shelburne, and others in the Aryan state and vote in favor of this resolution. I believe it is the right thing to do. Other comments or questions? Yes? Hope Crolius, Maine, Poland Road. And um, I appreciate that the commission has uh, uh, brought our attention to the flag, which as the previous speaker said, is something we've maybe not paid so much attention to. Uh, but I don't know who is behind this proposal. It's a group called changethemassflag.com. Uh, there is somebody who's a chair uh, who's been named a chair already, John Jim Peters, who is the executive director of the state's Commission on Indian Affairs. Uh, it seems like an over, or like an umbrella to do reparations for all the mistreatment that admittedly, truthfully has, the Native Americans have suffered at uh, the hands of the settlers, but I think tampering with the flag 
I think once this passes, we're going to see all kinds of cockamamie ideas out there for all kinds of things saying that this will be representing the people of Massachusetts, but who really is going to be on this commission? Are these the same people that would then say Columbus Day should no longer be celebrated and all kinds of other cultural changes that I think need to be really um, discussed, uh, not just have the flag, which is the ultimate symbol, it's a symbol, uh, be the kickoff for significant changes that might well do away with our history as a state. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah. Um, so, this, so this is to set up a commission. I think what the state has actually taken a look at this in the past, um, just to the point of trying to cost it out, and it costs so many tens of millions of dollars to actually effect this change that, um, you know, on the whole list of priorities of things that need to get done, I don't know where this really ranks to a lot of people. The, the, uh, the other thing, whoever put it together isn't, wasn't aware that Joe Comerford is not our state senator, um, Adam Hines is, but, uh, and he actually should be on the But the other thing, you know, the, 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 this debate, like it's, it's been all throughout the state. I think we're the last town in the county, one of the last towns in our county to have a town meeting. It's been on every town's town meeting warrant. I think it's passed in every town but one. Um, and the, 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 the arguments pro and con are pretty well established. If you followed this at all, it's pretty well established that don't change my history, the, you know, the, the, the Native American, you know, the whatever. But the, the one thing I'd just like to add to this whole overall debate is just, uh, look at what this, look at what our state flag translates into when you miniaturize it, okay? When you miniaturize it to a shoulder patch, like what's on our police chief's uniform, it looks awful. It does not look like a Native American. It doesn't look like a bow. What it looks like is a guy wearing an in, uh, uh, Easter bunny suit. <laughs> Just take a look at it, and and it doesn't even look like he's holding a bow. It looks like he's holding uh, an, an armrest, a, a, a railing to keep him from falling down. Like he's intoxicated, and um, or else he's have, has the ambul the Easter Bunny's got the ambulatory challenges. And um, so, but you know, either way, I think this is one of those things that just for that sake, just from the bad art that looks terrible when you miniaturize it and looks like an Easter Bunny on our police chief's shoulder, that we should. <laughs> Encourage the commission to do away with it because you know, we need to do better by our police. So that's that's that. Any other discussion? Yes. Hill Road. Um, I wanted to just mention I'm a graphic designer, and I would have to say that as a design for a flag, this is not a very good design. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not no, mock, making a joke of it, I just think we could probably do better. I think it's, you know, if the commission goes at this intelligently and gets good design submitted. Uh, this was adopted in 1898. I don't think it's particularly sacrosanct from that date. I, I, see, I don't see why not 100 years later we can't reconsider and make a better design that takes in history and social awareness. Any other comments? Yes, right behind this gentleman. I just have a question about, sorry, Michelle Held, I live on Elijah's ride. Um, I have a question about the value of a resolution. What, what weight does it carry? What, what, it, what is, good is it? Does it just mean it's just like a the statement. whole town feels that way? It can be freely disregard, disregarded by those in charge. It's not binding. It's not binding. It, it just doesn't seem to me like I don't know. This is a, no if you don't like the flag, write to your Congress. I mean, they're already doing stuff. It's not a town thing. Okay. Any other comments? Are you ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes. Uh -huh. Article 31. I move that the town adopt the resolution as printed in Article 31 of the warrant. Is there a second? <laughs> Second. Discussion. Nelson Shiflett from Shelburne Falls Road. I'll try to be very brief. 
uh, this resolution is put forward by community members who support the Nuclear Ban U.S., uh, which is a Northampton-based partner of the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, ICANN. I'm sure you've all heard of ICANN. It was the recipient of the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize. It has been passed by the citizens of Leverett, Coleraine, Montague, and Shrewsbury. It calls for the town of Conway to inform our state representative and senator and our U.S. representative and senators and Donald J. Trump that we wish the United States to support and ratify the 2017 uh, treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. The U.S. government is currently unwilling to sign the treaty and in fact has boycotted negotiations and attempted to coerce and prevent NATO allies and other countries from signing it. This is an opportunity for you as a citizen of the town of Conway and of the United States of America to state your position on the insanity of nuclear proliferation. Other comments? You ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I here and yeah. Yeah. Passes. I don't know. I, I article 32 and the last article. <laughs> I move that the town adopt the resolution as printed in Article 32 of the warrant. Is there a second? Okay. Does anyone wish to speak to this? Sue, you want to come forward and with the microphone? Well, uh, I think we all know the old Chinese curse. We live in interesting times. <laughs> and uh, we... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is it? Yeah. Nobody gets this, and I don't either. <laughs> um, we do live in interesting times. Uh, we uh, have had uh, amazing weather here in Conway for the last five or six or seven years. Uh, we've had a hurricane. We've had a tornado. We've had a drought that put several people's wells out of commission. Um, we've had... Uh, really life-threatening, if you're working outside as, as I was last summer, uh, life-threatening heat waves. Um, a fellow working with me and I looked at our, each other at one point and just said, let's go to a movie. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was really uh, brutal. Anyway, uh, so the question arises, what to do about it? How to plan for uncertainty? I mean, it's sort of an oxymoron, but I think it's a moral duty for us now. Uh, if we can plan a little bit for what has been called global, cl global climate change, uh, we will reduce the suffering in the future and the loss of, of uh, buildings and possibly animals. We've been lucky so far. We all watch on uh, television see what's... What, the devastation that's happening down south, the devastation that's happening in the Midwest. I mean, it, th this, these are not normal times, or let's say it's a new normal, and that new normal, I think, calls for action. I've spent a lot of time in the last six weeks t talking for an hour or so, in most cases an hour and a half, with about 25 people here in town who just seemed like uh, inter interested parties or who came to me and said they were interested. And um, I have to say, although there are three different important op opinions to respect about where these changes in this new normal come from, uh, nobody is denying that this is here and, and that we face um, really one emergency after another in the future, uh, just, as d does, just as do many, many other towns across the country and around the world. So what to do? Uh, Lee Whitcomb and I decided we would try to take that on. Um, I apologize for being clumsy in some of our communication, but uh, we still have global climate change by whatever name to deal with. and we. We have a chance to reduce the suffering in Conway uh, measurably in the future if we will just step up and think about this a little bit. So we decided that the, the um, 
structural addition uh, that would help would be a, a trust, something like the uh, swimming pool trust, something like, um, uh, I think the sportsman's club, is, is, is that a trust or is that a 501c3? What is that? What, what is it? 501c3, yeah. Uh, anyway, put, put together a, a small institutional change that can try to take some responsibility for our future and help us do that collectively. Uh, we have very little ab ability to collect extra money here in town. It's a very well-run town. I have all my adult life been involved in local politics, and this town is well-run. Uh, pennies are pinched, <laughs> uh, dollars are followed. And it makes me, makes me proud, but it also makes me know that it's going to be very hard to uh, follow up and prepare for the massive changes that seem to be right over the horizon uh, unless we plan for it and work together um, as, as we see fit. Um, did, Lee, did you want to say something about this at this, at this point? Yeah. This is, this is not part of town government. It is completely separate. It's simply here as a referendum question to see what people think. If you have a chance, pick up a copy of the uh, handout sheet that's out in the lobby. Read it. Tell us what you think. Bring us questions. Bring us project ideas. <coughs> the, the idea is to try and do something that is not town business, that is not appropriate to be included in town funds or, or uh, monies in any way but that will benefit all of us here in Conway one way or another. Okay, so it's going to roll out sometime later this year, we believe, and uh, we hope the uh, several people have brought forward projects already. We hope that people will consider uh, donations to the trust, whether it be for a specific project or just, it'll be run by a board of trustees who are Conway residents. And um, pretty well covers it, I think, for now. Um, well, I, Lee, there's one important thing. Yes, question. If uh, will these funds be able to have uh, accept tax exempt contributions? All contributions will be tax exempt if they're from in individual parties. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a little a nice a nice little um, touch. Uh, I think that um, are there questions that can we can we ask uh, if you have questions about this? It's kind of a bold move. Uh, we're only half prepared. We will be totally prepared in a few months. Um, but it's just recognizing that. These are not, the, this new normal requires some new thinking and possibly some new small institutions uh, to protect ourselves and our wildlife and our wildlands uh, going forward. Um, so are there questions that you have or comments that you want to make? Yes, way in the back. Hi, I'm Gemma Vanderheld. I'm the director of the ambulance for Conway, and I just wanted to clarify, in this referendum, there is mention of the ambulance not being fully accredited and not being able to provide certain services. Um, that is not true. We are fully accredited as a basic life supporting uh, transport ambulance. So as far as this whole thing goes, I, I welcome any helper funds or whatever that that this <laughs> referendum w might provide towards the ambulance but I don't want people to feel like the ambulance is not fully accredited and is not supported by the town tax dollars etc Gemma Thank you're me. probably you're probably looking at an old uh, copy of this tonight's copy all it says about the ambulance but it's well this is well, what was what, what you talked about yeah we talked about 
help okay, our other, average. Okay, other comments? Other comments or questions? Questions? You ready? Yeah. Ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, it passes. Does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Don't all raise your hands at once. Is there a second? All second. those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Hand in your yellow cards. Oh, hand in your yellow cards. Don't forget to hand in your yellow cards to save the town some. to provide certain services, um, that is not true. We are fully accredited as a basic life supporting uh, transport ambulance. So as far as this whole thing goes, I, I welcome any help or funds or whatever that, <laughs> that this referendum might provide towards the ambulance, but I don't want people to feel like the ambulance is not fully accredited and is not supported by the town tax dollars, et cetera. Gemma, you're probably, you're probably looking at an old uh, copy of this. Tonight's copy, all it says about the ambulance, but it's, well, this is what, what, it's was, what, what you talked about. Yeah, we talked about. Help okay, other, other comments? Other comments or questions? Questions? You ready? Yeah. Ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes. Does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Don't all raise your hands at once. Is there a second? All those in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.